Hey everyone, welcome back to Simply Learn YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to deep dive into one of the most advanced data visualization tools that is Tableau. But before that, let me give you an overview of Tableau. So what exactly is Tableau? Well, Tableau is a data visualization tool that allows you to explore and analyze data in a way that is intuitive and easy to understand. It's widely used by businesses and organizations to make sense of complex data and make informed decisions. Now you must be wondering what makes Tableau so special. Well, first of all, it's incredibly user friendly. You don't need to be a data expert to use Tableau. Anyone can pick it up and start creating visualizations in no time. Plus, it's super powerful with features like interactive dashboards, real-time data exploration, and data blending. Secondly, Tableau is incredibly versatile. You can use it to analyze data from a wide range of sources, from spreadsheets to databases to cloud storage and beyond. And it even has built-in connectors for popular data sources like Salesforce, Microsoft Azure, and Google Analytics. But the best part, it's a really fun tool to use. Whether you're analyzing marketing performance or identifying trends in customer behavior, creating visualizations using Tableau is really satisfying. You can make your data come alive with interactive maps, live charts, and scatter plots. So if you are looking for a data visualization tool that's easy to use, powerful, and fun, look no further than Tableau. I promise you won't be disappointed. Hope this has built up your curiosity to jump in with us in this video and learn more about Tableau. So without any further ado, let's start with our topic. Also, if you're an aspiring data analyst looking for online training and certifications from prestigious universities, and in collaboration with leading experts, then search no more. Simply Learn's postgraduate program in data analysis from Purdue University in collaboration with IBM should be your right choice. For more details, use the link in the description box below. And with that in mind, over to our training experts. Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In this session, we will be learning the Tableau Expert full course. Let's have a look at the agenda for today's session. First, we will learn what exactly is Tableau. Followed by that, we will understand the data connections provided by Tableau. Then we will learn how to create data extracts using Tableau. Moving ahead, we will understand the Tableau calculations, aggregations in Tableau, creating quick table calculations, box and whiskers plots, etc. Next, we will learn each and every single type of charts available in Tableau. Then, we will move ahead into formatting and annotations in Tableau. Then, we will understand how to filter data in Tableau. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. But before we begin, make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. This is Ben. Ben started a store that sells automobile parts like brakes, exhausts, tires, lubricants, and car interiors. He made a good start with his business and achieved profits. However, as days passed by, Along with his growing business, he faced some business challenges. He received orders from a variety of customers with different needs and requirements. For example, the northern states had higher demand for performance parts than others, and the eastern states demanded farm truck parts and lubricants more. And apart from this, a few products weren't performing well in the market and remained unsold. With the unbalanced requirements and economy variations, Ben had a tough time helping his customers with products on demand he slowly realized he needed something new that can help him tackle the store's problems. What if Ben had a tool that could keep track of his store's inventory and sales? A geographical map that can recognize the demand for various types of products from different regions. A forecast feature that could predict the economic fluctuations in the market and help Ben visualize every single detail visually on one single dashboard. This software could practically solve many business problems and also could identify new opportunities to improvise and grow the business. Such types of software tools are called business intelligence tools, and one such tool is Tableau. Tableau was capable of learning the store's business patterns and running queries against the data to help visualize the flaws and resolve them quickly. Now, let us understand how Ben used Tableau and solved the issues related to his business. Ben collected his store's entire sales data from the previous quarter and ingested it into Tableau. Now using Tableau, Ben was able to categorize the data based on monthly sales. It took the daily sales and considered it as the x-axis. And then Tableau computed the sales in the store. Now, Ben clearly understood the products that outperformed the sales charts and the products that did not have much demand. Let us elaborate a little. Ben found that the performance parts like sports exhausts, turbochargers, and engine management systems were selling well. 
With the Tableau Forecast feature, Ben identified the demand for performance products in the next quarter. So he raised the prices on a few products that had the peak demand and earned higher profits. In the second forecast report, Ben found no significant elevation nor a drop in the demand for the tractor parts and lubricants. Apart from this, Ben saw the sales graphs of electronics encountered a drop in the current quarter. Compared to the previous quarter in the sales of electronics, like the music and infotainment systems, were low. To improvise and stabilize the fluctuating sales of electronics, Ben came up with some exciting clearance sell offers on electronic products. Using Tableau's geographic map feature, Ben understood the product demand at a regional level. He found the northern regions were interested in performance kits for their imported sports cars. The eastern regions had good demand for truck parts and lubricants. Using Tableau, Ben could generate various visualizations based on his data and come up with business-oriented decisions. Last but not least, Ben could also monitor his decisions and was able to make some necessary modifications to his business model on the go. Ben is now delighted as working with Tableau is a smooth and efficient process. Today, Tableau is being recognized as one of the best-in-class business intelligence tools because of its powerful and dependable features. Tableau can support and connect to a wide variety of data sources like the cloud, DBMS, Excel sheets, and even get connected to real-time data from websites. And Ben keeps his customers happy using Tableau to solve his business problems. Today, more and more leading business organizations are leaning towards business intelligence tools intending to improve their business. Upon quite a success in his business, Ben decided to get a detailed understanding of Tableau by enrolling in Simply Learn's Tableau training program, which is led by industry experts who can train him according to the current business and IT standards to make his business even more successful. So what is Tableau? So before we understand what exactly is Tableau, let us imagine a simple situation. Imagine that you are an office worker and you get some loads of data. Uh, maybe like millions of rows or billions of rows and you are supposed to extract the insights of that particular data So what do you do? You basically load that data into a database and try to write the SQL commands and then try to extract the insights of that particular data So this kind of approach is basically time-consuming and you get exhausted Now what if you had a tool which could write all the SQL commands for you in the background and all you had to do is just to drag and drop the data. Sounds interesting, right? So Tableau is just the same. All you have to do is just drag and drop the data and it will automatically write all the SQL commands you ever wanted to write on that particular data and it will give you live data interactions and advices for the future. Now with this, let us understand the definition of Tableau. So basically, Tableau is a business and analytical software tool developed in America. Tableau helps people to understand, visualize and make data-driven decisions in real time with extreme agility and accuracy. Now with this, let us continue with the next topic, which will be about the various versions of Tableau. So at first, we have the Tableau Desktop. So Tableau Desktop is a data visualization application to facilitate you to examine virtually any kind of structured data and generate highly interactive, beautiful graphs, dashboards, and reports within minutes. Once a quick installation, you can tie to virtually any data source from spreadsheets to data warehouses and display information in several graphic perspectives. Designed to be easy to utilize, you'll be working more rapidly than ever before. Next, we have the Tableau Server. It is a business intelligence application that offers browser-based analytics anyone can utilize. It is a rapid-fire alternative to the slow pace of traditional business intelligence software. It is an online solution meant for sharing, distributing, and collaborating on content created in Tableau. What makes Tableau different? It is proposed to everyone. There is no scripting required, so everyone can grow to be an analytics expert. You can grow your deployment as you require it. Train online for free, find answers in minutes and not in months. That's the speciality of Tableau. Now followed by the Tableau server, we have Tableau Online. So Tableau Online is a business intelligence application that offers browser-based analytics anyone can utilize. 
As discussed before, it is a rapid fire alternative to slow paced traditional business intelligence software. So, Tableau Online is a secure cloud based solution for sharing and collaborating on Tableau views and dashboards. Next up, we have the Tableau Public. So now I want to give you guys a serious heads up if you are a beginner in Tableau. Tableau Public is like an open source. Whatever the data you choose to work on, using Tableau Public, it goes to public. So kind of like Tableau Public is not preferable if you want to work on your company's sensitive and confidential data. Tableau Public is a free software to facilitate anyone to get connected to a spreadsheet or a file and create interactive data visualizations for the web. It is delivered as a service that permits the user to be up to and running overnight. With Tableau Public, users can construct amazing interactive visuals and publish them quickly without the help of programmers or IT. It is designed for organizations to facilitate their websites with interactive data visualizations. There are higher limits on the size of data you can work with and among other features, you can keep your underlying data hidden. And lastly, we have Tableau Reader. Tableau Reader is a free desktop application that you can use to open and interact with data visualizations built in Tableau Desktop. With Tableau Reader, you can filter, drill down and discover humongous loads of data. Now moving ahead, we have the features of Tableau. So these are the few important features that you might want to consider. Those are the first one, robust security. Tableau takes special care of data and user security. It has a foolproof security-based authentication and permission systems for data connections and user access. Tableau also gives you the freedom to integrate with other security protocols such as Active Directory, Kerberos, etc. An important point to note here is that the Tableau practices low-level filtering which helps in keeping the data secure. Followed by that, we have the collaboration and sharing feature. Tableau provides convenient options to collaborate with other users and instantly share data in the form of visualizations, sheets, dashboards, etc. in real time. It allows you to securely share data from various data sources such as on-premise, on-cloud, hybrid, etc. Instant and easy collaboration and data sharing helps in getting quick reviews or feedback on data leading to a better overall analysis of it. Another extremely useful feature of Tableau is the use of time series and forecasting. Easy creation of trend lines and forecasting is possible due to Tableau's powerful backend and dynamic frontend. You can easily get data predictions such as a forecast or a trend line by simply selecting some options and drag and drop operations using your concern fields. Next up we have live and in memory data. Tableau ensures connectivity with both live data sources and data extraction from external sources as in-memory data. This gives the user the flexibility to use the data from more than one type of data source without any restrictions. You can use data directly from data source by establishing live data connections or keep that data in memory by extracting data from a data source as per their requirement. Tableau provides additional features to support data connectivity such as an automatic extract refreshes, notifying the user upon live connection fail, etc. Next we have informative view and even the mobile view. One of the key features of Tableau and the one that got its popularity is its wide range of visualizations. In Tableau, you can make visualizations such as bar chart, pie chart, GAN chart, bullet chart, motion chart, tree map, box plot and many more. Like you name it, Tableau got it. You can select and create any kind of visualizations easily by selecting the visualization type from the Show Me tab. Apart from that, it is capable to represent data in mobile view as well. Tableau acknowledges the importance of mobile phones in today's world and provides the mobile versions of Tableau app. The next and the last feature is that being capable of accessing data from various kinds of data sources. Tableau offers a wide range of data source options where you can get connected and fetch data from data sources ranging from on-premise files, spreadsheets, relational databases, non-relational databases, online cloud data, data warehouses and many more. So followed by the features, now we'll discuss about the advantages of Tableau. So following are the advantages of using Tableau. First one, it has remarkable visualization capabilities. Of course, the unparalleled capabilities of visualizing information is on top of the list of Tableau's software benefits. 
Followed by that, we have the ease of use. The tool's intuitive manner of creating graphics and a user-friendly interface allows non-developers to utilize the basic app's functionalities to the fullest. Users arrange raw data into catchy diagrams in a drag-and-drop way which facilitates information analyzing and eliminates the need for the help of IT department and pattern building. Next, high performance. Apart from its high visualization functionality, users rates its overall performance as robust and reliable. The tool also operates fast on big data which makes it powerful performance on an important point on the list of the advantages of W. And next is the mobile friendliness. One of our best advantages out of the W benefits is its efficient mobile application which is available for both iOS and Android. It adds mobility to Tableau users and allows them to keep statistics at their fingertips as well as supports their functionality that desktop and online versions have. And finally, we have the thriving community and forum. Tableau has a rich community. The number of Tableau fans who invest their expertise and skills in the community is increasing rapidly. Business users can beef up their knowledge on data processing and reporting and get many useful insights in this community. Also, forum visitors are ready to help settle any user issues and also share their experience. Next up, we have the disadvantages of Tableau. The first major disadvantage is the high cost. The Tableau is not the most expensive visualization software, especially compared to such business intelligence giants such as Oracle's and IBM solutions. All the same, the license is quite costly for small and medium companies, which makes it one of the considerable Tableau's disadvantages. Next is the inflexible pricing. Tableau's sales team is not flexible enough to provide case-by-case -case approach for their customers, ignoring the fact that each company has its own unique requirements for visualization tool package, the Tableau sales model requires clients to purchase and extend license from the start. As a result, a lot of companies that use Tableau arrive at the conclusion that they don't need all their licensed features. They would prefer to buying a set of requirements and scale them if necessary. Followed by that, the next disadvantage is poor after-sales support. On multiple message boards, users complain that Tableau software lacks proper after-sales maintenance. If customer has software performance problem, the support team does not settle the matter by investigating the problem's root and eliminating it. Next, we have the poor BI capability or the poor business intelligence capability. As previously mentioned, the tool provides best-in-class information visual interpretation. However, it lacks the functionality required for a fully fleshed business intelligence tool such as large-scale reporting, the building of data tables, and statistics layouts. And lastly, the poor versioning. Only the recent Tableau versions support revision history, while for the older ones, software rolling back is impossible. Now, with the advantages and disadvantages discussed, let's move into the top companies hiring. The companies which are desperately looking for Tableau experts are Accenture, EY, PepsiCo, Deloitte, Wells Fargo, Capgemini, and many more. Now, let's discuss the humongous and handsome salaries offered by these tech giants. So, according to Glassdoor, the average salary of a Tableau expert in America is 82,000 grants. And for a beginner, it is somewhere around $60,000 per annum. And at the highest rate, it is $1,10,000 per annum. Similarly, the average salary of a Tableau expert in India is $5,000,000 per annum. And for a beginner, it is somewhere around $3,60,000 annum. And for a highly skilled, experienced W expert, the salaries range from 8,75,000 per annum. So let me now begin with connecting to data. Now, in this particular topic, we are at the end of this lesson. You will be able to understand how you can connect to Tableau data server. You will be able to differentiate between a join and blend. How can you perform a join on a data? How can you blend a data? We will discuss the various connection options available. We will understand how Tableau server works in terms of the Kerberos authentication. All right. Uh, we will understand various performance optimization techniques as well, shadow extra extracts as well as uh, different methods that we can prepare in terms of the data that we want to analyze, all right? So let me begin. Now, the very first topic, which is 
uh, connecting to Tableau server. So I'm going to first take you through a couple of presentation slides here and then quickly move on to the environment where we will actually then start exploring the topic. So now when you want to connect to a data source in Tableau server, it's pretty simple. You can connect to a flat file in your local machine. So one is you will click on to the server in the start screen and uh, you can specify the server name. You can specify and uh, show your, uh, uh, log in your uh, credentials, the username and password. And based on that, you can perform the, you can have your connection to the database, all right? So that's how you can connect to the Tableau server as well, all right? So that's the very first basic. So the Tableau administrator is the one who assigns the roles and creates these data sources. All right, and you have uh, Tableau has the facility in order to import different forms of data for the analysis for your ease. And uh, once you're connected to the Tableau server, then you need to select the Tableau server data source. On the data menu, you will need to select the data source to download a local file, a local copy. You can select and create a local copy. And then you can also duplicate, uh, a duplicate of that data source will be added up into your data window. So that's how you can connect to Tableau server as well, all right? And uh, it basically promotes various features wherein uh, you can then connect to the Tableau server for your data. So you are in this example, you can see that you're able to connect to the Tableau server as an admin and uh, connect to the sample superstore and it downloads, it creates a local copy and duplicates all the data in that particular data window. That's how we can see the sample superstore and you can connect to the server. Uh, next, we are going to also understand what is joining and blending. So before I move on to the presentation slides here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the environment directly. Let us start exploring these blending and joining features uh, right therein. All right, I'm going to simply just uh, clear the sheets that we have. And um, let's go back to the connect to data source window. All right. Now, in terms of uh, your, this is where you're able to connect, you can see the Tableau server. So it's through the server that you can connect wherein you can specify your server credentials and you can click on connect. And uh, based on that, that's how then you can provide the credentials and uh, log in. All right. Now, I do not have a server uh, connection wherein I can show that example, but this is how you can click on any of these servers. You will have to uh, type in the URL. Click on connect and then provide the usernames and login provided. And that's how you can connect to your data source using a server option. All right. Uh, I'm going to show you the file option wherein you can connect to an Excel. And let us discuss the join and the blending part here. All right. So let me click on Excel. We have the sample super uh, data store here. And in this, when I pull in order, all right, I pulled in the first sheet. So there are three sheets in that particular Excel file. When we pull in order, this is how now you can identify that whatever are, uh, these are the header names. These are the dimensions and measures. That's how it's getting identified. You can notice all the dimensions are first place. You have all your measures, then you're able to identify the data type and the role an ABC, which is a contextual value or numeric value. That means it's a dimension with a pound sign. What kind of a data role is it? Tableau is automatically identifying each of these roles as well. All right. Even in the metadata, that's how you can see the field names, the field uh, name that you're going to see onto your tape, onto uh, your view, and the table from which it's going to be getting pulled in from. In this, you can uh, rename in case you want to change the particular name, hide it, uh, alias it, or describe it. All right, so this is how you connect. Now, connections is where you have the option to connect between live and extract. Now, if you connect to live, that means you're connected to this particular sheet live. That means any update happening onto your uh, sheet, any kind of updates on the sheet, there is a live connection. It will automatically update your views as well onto your sheets that you're creating. And in case if you select on an extract, 
all right this is what it means that it allows uh, what it does is it, it imports that data into the tableau data engine first in the data engine where it's going to perform the queries it will create an extract and based on these we can then start using the connection all right so what it does is it disconnects it's more like a small extract more like a cube if you understand it in that manner tableau creates an extract of that file providing you uh, a disconnected uh, where it allows you to give you a better performance a better query uh that's how you can then uh, work on and start creating uh and working on these extracts so you can refresh these uh, extracts at a timely manner as well so that is what the tableau extracts are where it extracts it as a copy of the data uh and saves it in the engine and that's how then the performance as well gets better in terms of using where you can connect to your particular data all right so you can work with uh, multiple data sources data sources can be of any type all right wherein you can edit from the number of lists that you can see it can be a flat file or server file as we saw or the saved one and uh, we can also then join multiple tables within the data or we can also blend when it's coming in from different data sources then we can also perform a blending so let me first show you an option for join now you can see we have the order table now when i drag and drop the people uh, sheet as well here you can see that tableau has automatically created a join all right it has automatically created a join when we have pulled in two tables coming in from the sheet and by default all right we have the inner join that tableau creates so it creates a inner join here wherein again you can then click on the join option here and you can specify and modify the join based on whether you want it as a inner join which is a default you want a left join now if you see the right jo join has been disabled here okay i will show these options here by default the right join is uh, disabled by uh, tableau by default by default and to enable that you will have to uh, connect to your uh, excel sheet in a different manner i will show that to you shortly so that's how you can change and you can perform your joins this is where you can uh, explore and show the join clause and here again then you can specify like you can see a join that's been created amongst the data source which is region and region people among these two data all right so it's also showing you the join and whether it is uh, equal to or not equal to all right so you can connect to multiple tables and uh, based on that you can add in uh, tables you can specify the different joins and based on that then when you click on sheet uh, you will then be able to see that there is a join being performed there are two tables now the people table also that has been added in and it has now performed an inner join on our data and you can start using this particular option so let's say i'm going to pull in the region on my columns and i'm going to have my sales on to my rows it's now providing me uh, details of my sales at a regional basis now let's say i also want to analyze the people belonging to these regions depending on the color so it's going to change the colors based on the central east south and west all right that's how these are uh, the people now number of people belonging to each region that it has identified so that's how it has taken up the region people as you saw there was a join that was created and it's given us that particular option and based on that you can see here we just have uh, this particular data source here and uh, that's how you can see now i used it earlier as well if you remember we had pulled in one particular table hence the blue tick mark sign here enables and shows us that this is the primary data that we used now this comes in picture when we're using a particular join so let me right now just um uh use this particular uh, detail here and uh, we're not going to require this all right so let's just close this we just need one right now because we are discussing on blending i'm going to show you the blending part later right now we're discussing on joins so uh that's how you can join in your data sources and you can combine multiple fields using these joins so when you have when you have multiple tables you can simply connect to the data let me go back to the data source page or uh, this is a startup page the data source page and you can see the joins that been performed now let's say you want to create uh, a join where you want to force due to certain situations and scenario where you want to force or write out a join or write or write join 
or for that matter, you want to write a custom SQL. Now you're not able to write a SQL right here in the in the drag area pane where you can drag and drop your sheets from the Excel file or any kind of a file that you're connected to. For that uh, and to enable the right join, you will need to uh, connect to your data in a specific manner. So let me open up a new instance of Tableau here. And let me show that to you as to how we can enable the right choice and how we can have our custom SQLs as well. So in case if we want to write in a custom SQL on our view, then how can we perform that initial custom SQL, all right? Okay, so let us connect to our data here. And I'm going to take you on to the Excel file. Now, when I click on the sample superstore here, okay, uh, what we had done is we clicked on open and that's how we opened up the uh, file, all right? And that's how we could see the sheets. Now, instead of using the open option directly, what I'm going to do is in the drop down, all right, here, instead of open, we have an option that says open with a legacy connection, all right? This is what is going to enable us to write a custom SQL where we can specify a query rather than using the entire data source or pulling in the entire table. So quick clicking on the second option in the drop down in the open uh, tab here, you will be able to see the open with legacy connection. I'm going to uh, so ensure that you've selected that and that's how you will then connect to the data source. And with that, you now have a new custom SQL option that's opened up for you all. This is where you can, once you've connected, you can double click on the new custom SQL and you can write in your query. You can write in the SQL where you want to perform the query and pull in your data. All right, you can have your select from and let's say orders. All right, so that's how you can perform and you can write in a uh, custom SQL and you can pull in the required data. You can uh, have your required table that you can pull in in terms of uh, creating a SQL that you want to pull in uh, and have your data, all right? So you can have your select from the orders and review the results. So here you can see the order table has 9,940. We have a preview of the data available in that particular uh, sheet that we pulled in. All right, and we can now parameters is what I'm going to cover when we come on to that particular topic. So I'm going to leave this for now. So that's how you can write your custom SQL and you can click on OK. And that's going to pull in your entire data. And as you can see now, instead in the earlier view, I'm going to just switch to the earlier instance of Tableau. You could see that you could see the name of the table that I dragged and pulled in. You could see the name order. But in case when we write a custom SQL, then it gives us the name which is written as custom SQL query. All right. And this is where you can get the information. You can edit the query in case you want to change the results and requirements. So that's how instead of clicking on open, you click on open legacy connection and you can have your own custom SQL defined. Now, along with this, all right, when you open and when you click on a legacy connection, when I drag in the people's table here, you can see that even the options for right joins have now been enabled. So by default, Tableau disables the option for right joins. And in case in certain situations and circumstances, you want the right join to be enabled, you will in the same manner have to import and uh, connect to your data using a legacy connection and you will have the right join, which is going to be enabled there for you all. So you can have your custom SQLs or the right join in that case, which gets enabled and you can use a custom SQL or a right join, right? So that was custom SQL. Then uh, joining is where you can, as I mentioned, identify and choose between the clauses and the clause that you want to add in, right? Now, let me show you an example of blending as well. So I'm again going to open a new instance of Tableau, all right? And uh, with that, I'm going to show you the example of blending. So let's say you have 
uh, you want to join in and when is the best time, when is the best way that you should use now. Joining is when you have all your multiple tables that you want to join coming in from one data source. Blending would be required when you want to join in uh, multiple tables coming in from different data sources. Or for that matter, you can also blend even though the tables are coming in from a single data source. There might be instances that you might want to have still perform a blend instead of a join. So let me show that option to you. All right. So let me connect to the data. Let's connect to Excel. Pull in our sample superstore file that we have. We have the order table. All right. And I'm going to go on to the sheets here. All right. So we have one order. We have one data, which is the order table. Now I'm going to again click on add a new data source coming in from the same Excel file. And this time I'm going to have the people's table and move to the sheet. So now if you notice, we can see two uh, data sets here, which is one for the orders and one for people here. And uh, in here, now this is where the blending will, will take place. This is where you will have a blend automatically when you pull in a view if there is a common view that comes into picture. Now let's say I'm going to first pull in the order date onto the columns. All right. And as soon as I pull in, you can see that my order table has now got a blue check mark, which has become a primary data source. All right. And now let me pull in sales onto my rows. And from people, let me have uh, from the people's table, let's have region pulled in and added to the colors. So region has become a secondary data set and now you can see a blend sign, right? A linking or data blending that has automatically been performed on both these two data sets. All right, that we have the order table and the people's table, blue being primary and people uh, which is being uh, secondary in this case, all right? So that's how you can uh, mention. Now in terms of blending, what happens is you cannot specify the join here in this case. There is a primary and secondary data and it is automatically blending in the data for you. It is automatically pulling in uh, the data. You will not be able to here select on the kind of join. You will not be able to manipulate the join. So that's how even though at times you have the same tables that are coming in, as I mentioned, there are times where you might want to perform and change the join. So that's when you can use the joining table option that comes into picture. So that's the difference between your blending and between joining the tables. Right. So uh, you can see this available link and you can see how it was simple to drag a particular view and uh, pull in data. And here as well, region has been added to the color fill because of which the legends have been created, identifying all four regions present in the data. And it's also letting us know here in the marks that region is coming in from the secondary table. You can see the orange amber tick mark here. And that's how you can identify that region is coming in from the secondary table that's been created. All right. In in terms of uh, connecting as well, wherein you can combine and uh, have the join uh, enabled. Now, depending on the kind of data, all right, going back to the data source, depending on the kind of tables and the kind of data that we have, that's when we can enable and have the joins that we can uh, decide on, all right. So one is you would require and need to have <coughs> Uh, a multiple uh, legacy connection with which you can then define the right out to join. All right. And that's how you can proceed and have additional uh, joins that you can work on. Uh, we also discussed how we could create and connect to a custom SQL query. All right. And uh, that is how we could using the legacy connection uh, also enable the right out join wherein we could then perform a right join on our tables as well. All right. And in case if it's a query, then it gives in the name of uh, the query uh, as a custom query, uh, which is what we saw onto the preview and the extract there. All right. Now, in terms of extract, 
all right now extracts are basically your saved subsets of the data source which will help you in improving the performance so instead of as i mentioned instead of being connected to a live connection it is better that we select an extract which creates a subset and stores it in the uh, tableau engine wherein it performs the queries and uh, it takes advantage of the functionality where it is not connected to the original data source and with this it can actually reduce the total amount of data in terms of defining and limiting it so that's how you can create an extract and let's say uh, once you've created an extract you can then perform like i said you have the edit option where you can edit the additional detailings you can allow an incremental fetch happening where then you can refresh the data each time or uh, your data is updated you can provide an incremental fetch so this can help you in improving your performance you can take advantage of the functionality in terms of the data source for uh, uh, using the discount uh, the distinct counts as well and moreover it's more like an offline mode you're actually accessing your data as an offline access where uh, it's not directly connected and uh, you're able to use it like a data uh, local data all right so that is the difference between a live and an extract so that's how you can make use of the legacy connections as well so let's go back to the presentation slides and have a recap now uh, these are the joining tables that's what we discussed that in terms of the tables that we have we can join a table and we have various joins available where it makes it easy for us to uh, analyze the data that we want to view we can join to a multiple tables and based on that we can customize the inner the left the right or the full outer join now the full outer join also depends on the kind of data source that you're connected to all right so in case of an excel file we still do not have the right outer join uh, option which is enabled so this possible option again when you open with a legacy depending on the data type is how you will have the right outer join that you can post and have it enabled so this would be depending on the kind of data source file also that you have and you have these four join types that you can use in terms of joining tables in tableau now when would you want to use a join all right so uh, a scenario is that you have a sales manager of an online shopping website and he wants to analyze the customers who have returned at least half the number of orders that they have placed now to fulfill this requirement he will require a worksheet wherein he can join the orders and the return tables on a particular common dimension all right so that's how then he can create a join he can change this between uh, the inner default to a left join between the order tables and the return tables and based on that he can then get to know the customers who have returned at least half the number of orders that were placed all right now in terms of enabling a right auto join uh this is taken care of by the microsoft jet data engine driver so in case if you all are facing a trouble where you're not able to connect and see that particular option is throwing an error this legacy connection options comes in only when you're using a microsoft jet uh, jet data engine driver this is easily available in case if you do not have it you can install this driver and with this it will enable the right auto join and the custom sequence for us all right to enable the uh, right auto join here that's how you open it with a particular uh, legacy connection now in terms of a right auto join we saw an example we can force and use a right auto join we can select on a new custom sequel where we can type in and have our custom uh, sequel generated and that's how we can work on with the uh, sequel where we can provide the sequel syntax and based on that the data source will then be generated now in terms of blending this is what happens when you have multiple data sources in your view or when you want to establish a link between them or you want to blend your data uh, it does not create a row level join so in case uh, like the example that we did also it was coming in from the uh, same sheet uh, from the same excel file but we did not want to create a row level join then that's when data blending would come in handy you can use it with a related data across multiple sources that you want to analyze in one particular view so that's how you can blend your data which creates a primary and a secondary data so we saw that in this example 
you can see that you know, there's a customer segment department and some of sales wherein the bars are being created which are coming in from the uh, from the primary connection but in terms of the sales plan all right these sales plan are coming in from a secondary data you can see the amber connection here the amber line here that is allowing you to understand and segregate and differentiate that it is a secondary connection so in tableau uh, that's how you can identify as you saw that your primary source and you have your secondary source wherein you can identify and distinguish you can distinguish between the common fields that are present in your data and uh, you can establish a uh, connection in case if it has not established a link you saw that there was an automatic link then you can provide a link autom uh, by explicitly defining a link as well let me take you back to uh, the environment all right so this was the custom sql <laughs> now in this case in case if there is uh, no link provided then you can provide a particular link onto your view you can have the option if it has not enabled then you can select your particular you can see that uh, it has not uh, implicitly defined but it's giving you an option that there is possibility of linking so you can explicitly define you can click on this link and use person as a linking field and this has also linked in your data with the previous data that you have all right so that's how you can define and explicitly mention uh, the way that you can blend your data and you can identify another way can also be wherein you can edit uh, the connection in the mapping and that's where you can perform so you can go back to your data sources and you can explicitly define you can identify uh, whether the first rows are the names whether uh, the rows here are uh, automatically generating a field or not all right so that's how you can have these two tables and you can define the blending whether you want it or not you can disable the linking as well in case you don't want to perform a particular link so uh with uh, coming to that now let us understand i've already discussed the difference between the joins and blends and where you can use it so let's uh, have a recap again now in terms of joining uh joining is a sql term where it is combining two data sources coming in from a single data source while in terms of blending it's more about combining two different data sources into one single sheet all right uh joining is done once at the data source and this can be used for every worksheet while blending will be done individually for every worksheet okay and both the tables that are joined must must exist in the sql database while in blending it helps us combine the database which is coming in from different sources different locations and in case if it's a multi dimensional source if it's a cube then you cannot perform a join and in terms of blending you have a primary source and uh, but in in terms of a primary source it cannot be a cube but your secondary source can definitely be a cube that you can use in terms of performing a blend all right uh so that's how you can optimize your connections you can select whether you want to have uh perform a blend on your connections you want to perform a join depending on the kind of connections that you have and that's how you can work with them with the different data sources that you have available we're going to proceed further in uh, understanding how we can create data extracts all right so as i mentioned the extracts are where you create a subset of your data source you can extract a particular data you can save it as a subset which will help you in performing and improving your query so instead of the live you can simply click on the extract which will create a tableau extract for you all right so uh let me just show you let me take you to the uh repository and in that you will be able to identify in my tableau repository data sources you can see that uh we have a tableau extract here for world indicators so what it's done is it has created a subset of the world indicator data source and it's created it's disconnected it's an offline mode which can allow us to improve the performance it can be accessed offline as well when you're away when you're probably traveling and uh, we can then create an extract where we can keep refreshing it with the original data and uh, we can then replace it with the content or we can provide a complete incremental refresh with these all right now extract can also be created from uh, within our data sets as well once you perform so let's say let me go back to 
our uh, view here and let's have category in our columns let's have quantity on our rows now even here you have the option of going under the data menu where you can uh, click on the extract data so whatever you've selected any kind of performances and any kind of the aggregations that you perform now this is your uh, data that you perform now in, instead of even though it's a live connection you can still go to the data menu here and you can click on create and extract a data which will create a subset all right, which will create a subset for you where you can create this data and you can provide the different fields wherein you can select what you want to filter, whether you want to add a specific filter to your field, whether you want to specify the aggregation data for the visible dimensions. This is where you can select the option for the measures to be aggregated. The default, instead of using the default, what is the kind of aggregation that you want to use. So this can allow you to minimize the size of your file as well and increase your performance. You can click on aggregation and you want to roll up the dates to year, to quarter, to month, you can select on the aggregation the number of rows that you want to allow in terms of the incremental fetch here you want to provide the incremental fetch for all rows or just the top particular selected rows so you can select on that particular option once you specified all these detailings you can then click on extract and that's going to uh, save the subsequent uh, file in the location that you have saved in terms of the extract and it will save up an extract for you all right so when you click on extract it will ask you for a subsequent location of where you want to save it there is a custom query that we had used and uh, let's say if we save it on the desktop itself you can see the save type which is a dot tde which is a tableau data extract and the next time you can start working using these data extracts and you can start performing where you do not need to then have your custom SQL uh, written in or any other details. you can simply use the extract and start working on it all right you can actually uh, restrict the size and improve the performance and you can uh, perform data extracts on these as well all right and then again in the data menu option here you have the option to replace your particular data source so let's say you have your uh, option where you want to uh, perform of uh, incremental fetch then you can replace the data or you can upgrade it or for that matter you can go to this particular uh, table you can refresh your data with the uh, connection where you have the uh, additional uh, refresh data you can view your data you can duplicate it rename it we uh, just discussed how we can create the uh, extract data options as well. So that's how you can perform and see uh, and, and have an extract uh, of your data. So that was uh, using your data extract. Now, uh, you can also write custom SQL. So we've discussed that. Let me take you back to the presentation slide and have a recap. So here, this is the window that we saw in terms of the extract where you can add in the qualifications, where you can narrow down your data even more further. You can select an incremental fetch whether you want it for all the rows or limit the number of rows to be included in that particular extract. Uh, then we also saw that how we could write a custom SQL. We could open it in a legacy connection that uh, helped us to open up a custom SQL window where we can write down the SQL with the exact data that we want to analyze. This can again help us in improving the query performances where we can write down and provide uh, an optimized query against our data that we want to use. All right. Uh, in terms of the supported data sources, a lot of y'all had questions what kind of data sources are supported. Now, Tableau Desktop is uh, supporting the, uh, it determines uh, the support depending on the kind of license that you have purchased, all right? So only when you have the required license, it will support the different data source types. And you have a personal edition, which provides you and allows you to uh, use the support for a lot of databases. Uh, but it is the professional edition that provides you additional database options that you can connect to. So data such as text files, access files, Excel sheets, uh, and so on, these can be connected through the personal editions. While in terms of a professional edition, the professional license, this is where you can connect other than the other than the personal editions, you can connect to the personal uh, additional databases like your Oracle, SQL, and uh, you can uh, connect to certain more additional 
connections here, which is supported, 40 plus data connections, which is supported in the professional edition. All right, so that's how you can connect to these different connections. Now, also along with that, once you have your server that comes into picture, uh, what a server does is it provides you a Kerberos authentication, which is a supported, trusted authentication uh, that it uses in terms of your single sign-on. All right. So what it does is in this case is that, uh, as you can see, it is a protocol that is provided to trust the authentication between your machines. And that's how uh, it uses a third party network service called as the KDC, the Key Distribution Center, which provides a secure connection between your desktop and the server machines. And this is supported based on the Kerberos authentication. All right, and that's where you can, it handles in, it uses only one user authentication, the permissions and the access control uh, in such cases like the workbooks uh, is, is going to be now these. The workbooks and extracts will not be handled by Kerberos, but uh, the permissions and access control, those are the things, those are the detailing that Kerberos will be handling in terms of your uh, data connection. All right, so basically if your Taboo server has a Kerberos enabled uh, on your machine with a valid active directory credential, then what Taboo does is it connects to your server and it completely skips the step of authenticating. So in case, let me take you to the environment. You're in the environment, you can see the server option and in this you have the publish workbook. Now let's say when you want to, you've created your workbook and you want to publish it onto your server. Now this is where it asks you to connect to the server here. It asks you to provide the credentials and then based on that, it then asks you once you've connected to, let's say you've connected to your server, it is then going to ask you a sign on for that particular configuration. Now, if you have a core broth environment which is activated, then it's going to skip these basic steps here and it will directly allow you to connect and skip these connection uh, that comes in in between. So that is what is core broth authentication. All right. So it's a single sign on method. And uh, once you have that enabled, then you can make use of these. You can, you need to configure your Tableau server with these Kerberos configurations, all right? So it's a three-way authentication protocol. Now, how this works is a mechanism of uh, mutual authentication between the client and the server is provided with the Kerberos authentication. So when the user, uh, user logs into the directory, it directly asks for the credentials which are authenticated by Kerberos. And once this is authenticated, a ticket is generated and sent to the user's computer. And then when the user tries to connect to the Tableau server from the desktop or the web browser, the server, uh, uh, the Tableau server authenticates the user and it directly allows us to perform. Now this mechanism is provided before the network connection is opened up between the client and the server. Right. So how does it work in terms of a single sign-on? How does it support it? Is it supports a single sign-on option wherein uh, you have the server configuration and in this you have a Corbros tab where you can uh, define enabling the single sign-on option in terms of the environment where you can connect. Uh, individually you can connect with a single sign-on to connect to the server from your desktop or the web browser. All right. In terms of trying to optimizing your query, now how can you optimize your query? Tableau adopts various query optimization techniques to improve the query performance. All right. So what it does is it, it provides parallel query where it improves the performance speed of the dashboard by performing and providing a capability of executing a parallel query. So in this case, what happens is it executes more queries at the same time. It is independent uh, queries that start at the same time and hence they are faster and improves the performance. So this is what Tableau does. It provides the parallel query. Next is it has the query fusion. In this, what it does is Tableau has the ability to reduce any kind of complex or large number of queries into a few or simple ones. So that's how it again optimizes your performance. Right, And then it also has external query caching. In this, it quickens up the process of optimizing your data by processing it into a cache. 
all right so that uh, it does not need to go and hit in the warehouse every time that you require a particular data so this is possible with the external query caching so tableau adopts these various uh, methods it also has a data engine vectorization wherein it has a in memory analytics column and it's a faster query which helps in reducing the extract size and creation time or so based on these that's how it can improve the performance and uh, that's how it optimizes these techniques and tableau handles and takes care of each of these so it performs the parallel query by its own it uses a particular query fashion which is short it does not uh, it shortens up all the queries the external query caching that it uses and also provides a data engine vectorization where it makes it even more quicker and faster now in order to quicken the process of your loading of data what tableau does is it creates and saves a shadow extract file on its own all right what it does is uh, in the repository for you to load your data faster other than you creating an extract it takes up the content of a shadow extract in your repository file and it saves it up as a shadow while you're working on the workbook all right and that's where then when you're creating and working uh, based on the legacy non legacy excels or text files or statistical file it creates a shadow extract file automatically wherever you have your rep repository also if you're an aspiring data analyst looking for online training and certifications from prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts then search no more simply learn's postgraduate program in data analysis from purdue university in collaboration with ibm should be your right choice For more details, use the link in the description box below. And with that in mind, over to our training experts. So, in case when you're working on something, what it does is in your repository folder, all right, where you have your repository, which is in my documents in the data sources, you can you will be able to see that it provides you a particular uh, extract that is a, a shadow extract that's been created, and you can see that. uh it it creates a, a shadow extract right there where that you can make use of all right or uh, in the background so this is done automatically by tableau to quicken up the process this is something that you do not need to handle uh by default is this uh, the folder there is a folder that gets created uh when you have a proper license version then you will see that in the repository folder you will have a shadow extract folder and uh, based on that that is how uh you will see that at least the first five at least the top five shadow extracts will be uh, saved with a dot dt ttde extension and that's how it uses and replaces it replaces the oldest one so when you have a license version in that case then uh, that's when you will be able to see this extract folder and uh, this is when it quickens up the entire process let me begin with the next topic which is calculations all right now in terms of calculations uh these are pretty much uh, these help us in terms of understanding in terms of creating an extractful meaningful result of our data all right so sometimes it's pretty much necessary that we make use of calculated fields now you've already seen that i've been making use of we created the shift to date and i created various uh, calculations and i've been mentioning that uh, you know i'm going to discuss these in detail in the next topic when we have like we created the primary table the secondary table i showed you the quick table calculations so you're already pretty much aware of how i was using them but let us understand these in detail now all right so let me begin so at the end of this session in terms of uh, when we complete this topic you are going to understand how you can make use of strings dates logical as well as arithmetic uh, calculations how you can work with different aggregation options how you can make use of the grand totals and subtotals the uh, quick table calculations which are inbuilt by tableau how you can create uh, automatic and custom splits uh, discovering the ad hoc analytics which is offered by tableau and how you can perform the lod that is level of details calculation all right so let's begin with the very first topic how you can work with strings dates logical and arithmetic calculations wherein you can create a completely new field which is not present as part of your underlying data you can actually create that using a specific formula there are functions and operators provided so you can use a string right you can use a date 
you can use logical operators or arithmetic calculations and based on that you can then apply certain functions and operators and finally create a calculation so you can create these four kinds of calculations the arithmetic date string and logical ones all right so let us understand and explore how we can use how tableau provides us various built in functions wherein we can use a calculated field and create an arithmetic calculation so we've seen an example where i created a profit margin or a profit ratio in our earlier exercises in our earlier demonstrations wherein you can use let's say when you want to create the profit ratio we use the sum of profit divided by sum of sales so that's how we created an arithmetic calculation similarly we can create and use string calculations all right so i'm going to show you an example of each of these uh and then we can also we saw right now i created the date to ship in the earlier example for one of our views wherein i used the date calculation where we created the date and we will also make use of one of these logical calculations to uh see and understand how we can make use of the if else uh, the logical calculation operators and functions and make use of these calculations so uh we have a scenario here so before that let me move on to our tableau environment here all right and uh, let me start showing you one of the examples of each that we can use in terms of creating them all right and in here let me quickly create one simple view so i'm going to add in so i'm going to add in my states to rows and i'm going to add sales to my columns and quickly create one bar chart here all right now i want to have my uh, let's say i want to analyze the uh, sales across each state here all right but i also want to know the count of distinct items all right so in this case what i'm going to do is let me have my product name all right because i want to know the count of distinct distinct items i'm going to right click on the product name here and i'm going to then drag and drop this to the columns over here all right onto the column section now because i've selected the right click option and then dragged in dragged and dropped in the product name or dimension onto the columns it opens up the drop field as to how i want to use it whether i want to use since i want to use a distinct field in analyzing all right it opened up this uh, particular window of whether i want to use a count product name or a count distinct product name all right so i'm going to select the count distinct because we want to distinctly analyze the counts of the items all right and click on okay all right uh what are aggregation functions aggregation functions diksha the the sum the average these are the different aggregation functions so right now the basic default is sum all right so it's summing up the measure whatever measure we've selected that's the aggregation function so whether you want to sum it up you want to average it out you want to use median count minimum maximum these are all the inbuilt aggregation functions provided by tableau or then you can also use the aggregation functions when you're using calculated fields beyond the ones provided so those are aggregation functions uh yes we have a bar chart i'm going to still analyze and show these details to you further in terms of aggregation so what i did was instead of just using the product name as it is i've used a count distinct all right uh could you please drag and drop the product name or uh, you want me to show that to you once again siva yes uh, i'm going to take this off my uh, columns here now when i want to add my product name if i directly drag and drop it onto the columns it's just going to add up the details asking me how i want to use it as a dimension now that's not what i want to do because as for the analysis i want to i want the count of distinct items right so for that i'm going to simply right click on product name and then i'm going to drag and drop the product name onto the columns so in that it's going to then ask me what is the aggregation i want to use on my dimension and i want to use a count dis distinct so you can see count product name and count distinct product name so i'm selecting the second option and clicking on okay now i want to see the sales for items sold and this particular field is not available in my data set so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a uh, one using my calculated field because i want to see the sales per item all right so let me uh, right click on my sales here all right in the uh, database so one way of doing it is you can right click or in the drop down 
you have the option of clicking on create a calculated field all right for that specific field or in the data pane in the drop down here it says create calculated field okay you can select either option when you select the drop down for from here it's blank and you'll have to input the formula when you select a particular field and do it then in that case it opens up and adds in the field by default wherein then you can specify the functions and operators so let me specify the arithmetic calculation here so uh, the first type that i'm showing you the very first option in terms of calculated field the arithmetic calculation all right so let's have our sum of sales and i'm going to divide this because i want to know sales per item sold now that is the reason i've created the count distinct product name here so diksha when you mentioned you're seeing two bars the only reason i did that was right now i'm just trying to create a count product name and once i add in the details i'm then going to replace the particular uh, view from it all right so i'm going to divide this with the count product name all right so that's how we are creating our sales per item calculation using the arithmetic calculation method sales per item so i'm dividing the sales based on the count distinct of the product name all right and let me click on okay and with that uh, in the measure we have a new measure that added up which is the sales per item this is this particular calculated field now i'm going to place it it's getting placed in the measures directly because it's returning a particular number right the numerical uh, value and hence it's placed in measures now let me add my sales per item into the columns so i'm going to replace my uh, count product name here all right so here i can now see uh, you can see notice and uh, uh, this this shows aggregated all right this shows it's an aggregated means it's a calculated field that's been used now all right so i'm able to see the sales per item so i'm comparing the sales versus the sales per item on a distinct basis all right and i cannot change the aggregation function here so notice earlier when i specified the default function is sum we can change these aggregation functions for a particular measure from the inbuilt ones or we can specify it as a calculated field now in this case it does not give us any option to change the aggregation function it shows it's aggregated already because it's a calculated field it's taking in the aggregation as we specified in the in the arithmetic calculation all right so that was your example of having your calculated arithmetic calculated field so here we can see the sales per item for each state right so this kind of an example is an arithmetic calculation great so let's move on now we've already seen we've covered up the first type which was arithmetic calculation now let me show you an example of how we can use calculated fields and create a string calculation all right so let's say we want to analyze the customers beginning with the name s all right the one that's illustrated in the in the slide here which says that we will be analyzing the customers beginning with s okay so in this case let me add up my customer uh, name into the rows right and let's have profits in the columns all right so we have customer names in rows and uh, columns uh, all right now what i'm going to do is let's consider that at this point of time we have a range we have a scrolling and we have a range of customer names here and i only let's say want to at this point of time let's say i want to develop and come up with a scheme that all the customer names beginning with the word s all right they are uh, entitled to getting a uh, a discount all right we are coming up with a particular offer now it would be pretty difficult if i add up the customer name in the filters here and then manually select the one with <coughs> s right or i can also use the wild card wherein i'm using the option to select one with an s similarly i can also make use of the calculated field to achieve the same uh, scenario so let's click on uh, create calculated field let's name this as customer with 
S. All right, customer beginning with S. And now we're going to provide. Now, if I expand this arrow here, you can see there are a lot of functions provided by Tableau in terms of number, string, date, type conversion, logical, aggregate, user, and table calculation. And that's where, uh, based on that, you can make use and selection. And it also specifies the kind of requirement of any, a small definition and example preview of it. All right. So in case it's difficult to remember all the aggregations, it's difficult to understand how it's created, you can simply click on the uh, types, and that's how you can come up with uh, the definitions of these as well. All right. So let's have the function start with, because we want all the customer names starting with, and we want it for customer name beginning with S. Now, in terms of the calculation, it's telling us uh, there is a particular error. So let's find out, does that? All right, and now my calculation is valid. I have my uh, customers beginning with S. All right, I'm um, creating a calculated field and click on OK. Now, this is going to bring in a string function. So when I click on OK, it adds up a Boolean logic, a true and false uh, data type, and it adds it up to the dimensions because it is related. It is based on the string functions here for the customers. All right, so uh, this is how we have a calculated field selected. And let me this time add up the customers with S into the filters. All right, and now it gives me the option of true and false. All right, whether I want to include it, whether it's true or false, and uh, let's say I'm going to say that I want to include that particular option with the customer name beginning with. All right, and we do not see data here. Let's just check what is the problem here. Yeah. This is excluding our data. Let just give me a moment. We have our customers. Let me quickly edit. Start with customer name S. And this is absolutely OK. All right. So we have the true and false option, and we want it true as the customer's name beginning with S, and click on OK. And we now see a list of customer's name that is beginning only with the letter S. All right. Uh, Jacqueline, uh, start with customer name. So this is how we can make use of the string as uh, calculations. All right. Next, now, let us see how we can make use of the date calculation. Now, we've already performed this kind of a calculation, so I'm going to explain uh, in terms of the date calculation when we wrote in the dates to ship, what, what each of it uh, meant, all right, when we wanted to analyze the difference. Uh, yes, it's going to be case sensitive in that case, so Jay, you're absolutely right. So uh, in case if it's not a lower case, it's not going to take in the function. Tableau somehow has a case sensitivity, and it only takes in a lower case. Uh, I'll show that example to you. So when you're saying that, uh, no, in, in terms of the letter S, it's not going to be case sensitive for the uh, alphabet because you're always saying customer names beginning with the alphabet S. In this case, it's not, but overall it's case sensitive. I'll just show you that example in terms of the date calculations right away. So going back on our uh, Tableau sheet here, we have the dates to ship that we've already created, so I'm just going to click on Edit. Now in this case, uh, if you notice the date difference, uh, what needs to be specified for a date difference is there are three parts to this, all right? So let's say now we wanted to analyze the number of days it took from for the order to get shipped, all right? So in our data set, we already have the order date. We have the ship date, all right? And we want to calculate how uh, the number of days uh, is required in terms of shipping the product. So uh, I've used in the date difference function. And in this case, then, we need to use, there are three inputs that comes into picture, all right? There are three cases here. So the first one is wherein you want to specify what part, what role is it going to play, 
all right so it's going to play the role of a day because i'm finding out on the basis of day you can add it as week month depending on the role that you want to play and then the difference between those two values that you want to subtract the difference that you want to have between these two so we have the order date and ship date now if the same day you can see the calculation is valid now let me change this to day and you can see that it shows an error in the calculation so in this case it needs to be a lower case that's when the case sensitivity is uh, it it takes an effect and it's going to throw in an error in case if uh, you're going to write that right in terms of the first parameter all right uh, it's not going to be case sensitive because you're only specifying the customer name here so you're picking up it from the customer name what is the letter alphabet that it should, that it should take up all right but in terms of the date ship to date calculation field you need to it's case sensitive where it only works with lower cases because here you're specifying what part is it going to play the day to ship uh, what part will it play in terms of the difference it's going to play the part of day all right so that's how you can create the day to ship and you can make use of the date functions and you can create a date calculation all right that's how we had the day to ship option and we can make use of it although it was not present in our data and we can analyze our entire data here in terms of creating the days to ship so that was your days to ship date calculation similarly then you have the logical calculations all right so i'm going to show you an example of uh, how you can use a condition or a logical calculation and uh, use them in terms of your analysis so let me go back to our environment here let me create a new sheet <coughs> now let's say let me give you a scenario here that we want to highlight all the sub categories that has sales of more than 100000 all right so for that we're going to create a calculated field that will only specify the sales of sub categories of 100000 and above so let's create the calculated field let's give it a name as sales kpi and now this is where we're going to provide logical functions and operators and uh, let me enter the syntax so i'm saying if my sum of sales so the bracket if my sum of sales is greater than 100000 then hi else <coughs> low and let's end is my calculation valid yes it is and i'm going to now create a sales kpi so that i can highlight the sub categories having sales more than 100000 as high and low all right let me click on okay and now we have the sales kpi that's added up to the measures but we viewed you can see uh, although it's a measure it's showing the abc icon here in terms of the data type because we have it as high and low measures here all right so in terms of the expected let's see the expected output here and see how we can make use of it so i'm going to add in <coughs> my <coughs> sub category into the columns and let me add my sales into my sales kpi into the row right and or rather i can add up or let me add sales to my rows all right and this is where now when i want to highlight uh, that's how i can create the calculated field and add it up in the colors so that it can distinguish between high and low so i'm adding up the sales kpi into the colors and now we can distinguish that the kpi is one which is above 100000 it's high or then low so these are the ones we can identify between high and low the alerts that we can make use of uh elias you have a question in date difference is it considering the order date minus ship date or ship date minus order date uh minus referring to minus 
Uh, one second. Let me just open up the ship date uh, when you're saying. Uh, it is order date minus the ship date, right? So that is what it's going to refer to because we're, whatever is the order date minus the ship date, that's how we're going to get the date difference, right? The date took to ship. Excellent. All right. Uh, yes, I am at sales uh, KPI. Let me open that up in terms of editing if you want to edit that particular. Yes. Uh, Dilip, uh, you asked me to open up the sales KPI. There you are. Can we use a multiple condition? Uh, in terms of multiple condition, if you're saying that uh, high, average, and moderate, is that what you're saying? Like, let's say you want to say that if uh, sales is 1,000, then it should be high. Uh, else, if sales is uh, 80,000, then it should be moderate or low. Then you can use the else if operator. That's how you can add up the else if operator and uh, make use of uh, the, the detailing. That else if sales is uh, greater than or less than 80,000, then create it as, so you can use that multiple option. The uh, only thing is you need to use the else if option then in this case. Yeah, so you can use multiple conditions. Like, uh, let's say, let me quickly show that example to you. So if you create a calculated field here, uh, you can use a case in which you can mention uh, the east, west, or low, right? So you can use different kinds of examples and cases and scenarios where you can mention uh, the different sales and budget. That if my sales is so much, then it should be, uh, you know, that particular uh, date or else. So you can use multiple uh, functions. That's not going to be a problem. All right. So this is going to be an example of your logical operator. We have our next topic, which is working with aggregation options. All right. Now, this again, you've noticed a couple of times that by default, we have our calculation wherein Tableau takes in a default calculation, all right, being the sum. But uh, you can change these aggregation functions. You can see an entire list that Tableau provides to us, all right? And that's how you can make use of these <coughs> aggregated functions. That is your, uh, whether you want to have a summation, whether you want to have an average, all right? So there are different mathematical functions here that you can see, and these each will produce a particular aggregated data, all right? So these are what are called your aggregation functions. All right, and these will help you perform the kind of aggregation, the kind of calculation that you want to perform on that particular field. So you can make use of these functions, all right? And so now understand one thing, you can use uh, Tableau to set up your aggregations only for measures in your relational data sources, all right? In terms of a multi-dimensional data source, it contains the aggregated data already. All right, so it provides you these list of predefined aggregations here as you can see. So let's understand each of these functions. Now when it comes to an attribute, all right, in this case, this is going to be returning the value of your expression, which has a single value for that row, all right? So let's say, let me move to the environment here to understand and explain what these particular functions are. All right, I'm going to pick up uh, and discuss a few of them. Now, let's say we have sales, all right? Sales by default, when we talk about the aggregation function, so you need to right-click and go to default properties, and you have the aggregation option where you can see sum is set to default. You can change these default properties to the aggregation that you wish to, which are present here, all right? So you can have an average, you can have a median, account, account distinct, and then various other options present here, right? So when it comes to using an attribute, all right, or the attribute aggregation function as specified, then in that case, it's going to return the value, all right, of the expression as one particular value of the row, okay? So uh, in this case, it shows the field then changes to a text I can attribute where it ignores any kind of null value if it's present. Okay, so you can basically make use of these when you want to only pull in, let's say, values of all the rows 
uh, which is otherwise displayed as a different uh, uh, different values in it. Okay, so that's when you can make use of it. Now that is not present here in this case, as you can see as an attribute. That comes in handy when you're using calculated fields. All right. So let's say when you open up a calculated field, you will see you have the attribute which is termed as ATTR, the attribute expression. Let's say we're saying the attribute of sales. So you can notice it gives you the entire definition. It returns the value of the expression uh, if it only has a single value for all the rows in that group. And in case if not, then in that case it will display it as an asterisk sign. So that's what it does. It, it's useful. Basically, this aggregation is useful when you want to aggregate a particular dimension. All right. Let's say we have customer names. We want to aggregate and come on to the number, the names, or uh, the total number of customers that you have. So in that case, it will only return single values of that row. If not, then it will otherwise display as an asterisk. So that's when this kind of a function comes in handy for us. Uh, not that you cannot use it with uh, measures. But just an example of the best use when you want to aggregate a particular dimension and you want null values to be ignored, you want to know the single values of all the rows, then this particular uh, aggregation function is going to be helpful. All right. Then in terms of your uh, next one, you have, then you have dimensions. Now these again will return all the unique values, all right, in your measures or dimensions, both. So it's going to only bring in all the unique values here in this case. And in terms of sum, we are already aware in terms of average. Then you have median. Now this is again to do with it's going to return the median of the numbers in the measure. Then you have count and count distinct. All right. So count is going to uh, ideally return the number of rows in your measure or dimension. And uh, it, in that case, uh, null values are again going to be ignored. But in terms of count distinct, it's going to return the number of unique values. So count will return all the values, the number of values which are present. But in terms of count distinct, it will return the unique values in a measure or dimension. All right. So that's how you have various aggregation functions. And to know details of each of these, you can make use of the uh, Tableau provides the details about each of these because you have various, as you can see, your various inbuilt functions. There's an entire list of functions that you can make use of. And uh, anywhere you need to know additional details. Now, these are the basic ones that you can see, the inbuilt ones. <coughs> so if you want additional aggregation functions as well, you can make use of these functions from the calculated field. And each of these has its explanation provided. But in terms of the basic usage one, the ones that you can change it to default, here's a basic list that Tableau provides. So it has uh, additional functions as well, but that's when you'll have to then open up the calculated field and make use of those functions. So that was your aggregation functions, all right? Then comes in your grand totals and subtotals. We've again, we're already aware, we've seen this in our earlier examples, that we're able to make use of our totaling option, we're able to add in the grand totals as well as subtotals of the data, wherein we can see the grid that is displaying the subtotals and the grand totals here for us. All right? You can see the grand total right here, and you can see the subtotals for each category level as well. And the grand total across every uh, subcategory for its particular category towards its particular year. All right? Now, to enable your grand totals, you can simply go to the analysis menu. So you've seen that in our earlier examples as well. And uh, that's where you can go to the analysis totals and you can make use of and have your totals enabled. So that's how you can have your totals. Now coming on to quick table calculations, let me now discuss on this because uh, uh, the other topics were recaps that we've been performing. Now you've also seen that there were instances when I performed quick table calculations, all right? So these are basically calculated fields when we apply a particular calculation at a data set level. All right. So Tableau provides certain functionalities. It provides certain uh, uh, functionality here in terms of applying the calculation at your table level. So as the name suggests, table calculation, it allows us to provide that kind of functionality wherein it computes the uh, uh, applied uh, values, all right, in your entire table. And this is basically dependent on the structure, the table structure that you have in your view. 
Okay, so that's how you can make use of table calculations. And what Tableau does is it provides some inbuilt functions which are usually uh, in use. It provides it as an inbuilt quick function where you do not have to input any kind of formulas in those functions. You can simply click on those options and it's going to immediately compute the entire range specified that you're selecting. All right. So let's see one of the examples. So I'm going to take you to the environment here and <clears throat> let's have our order date in columns. Let's have our sales in rows. And let me just enable the labels as well. All right. So that's created a line view since it's a series over time. Uh, so if you remember in the chart types, the best uh, example is to make use the best reference is to make use of the line graph and hence Tableau automatically creates a line chart here for us. All right. Now we have the yearly sales as we can see. All right. Now <coughs> let me add sales again to the rows. So what I'm going to do is we can see two uh, sales calculations here. So what I'm going to do is with the second calculation, I'm going to in the drop down, you have a quick table calculation consisting of all your detailed calculations here as you can see. So you have the running total. So this is going to show you a cumulative total. All right. Then you have the difference. So this is in terms of showing you the entire difference about uh, some absolute change between the measures that you have. All right. Then you have the percent difference. So this will give you difference in terms of a percent value. All right. It shows you the uh, difference in terms of those options as a percent. Then you have percent of total. So this is going to give you the values as a percent to the entire total. So what is the contribution of each year in this case to the entire total uh, that you have in terms of the contribution. All right. The sales. Then you have rank. So this is going to rank our values numerically. We have percentile, which is going to compute our values in a percentile uh, manner. We have moving average. <coughs> this is going to calculate the fluctuations in terms of identifying uh, any long term trend. All right. Then year to date tables, or uh, then you have compound growth rates year over year. All right. So there are various such functions that you can see here, which are provided by Tableau. All right. Now I'm going to change and uh, use the percent of total. All right. So this is going to give us the values of the percent for every year that it is contributing towards the entire total, what each year is contributing. So let's click on percent to total. And now we can see here the second sales bill. There is a calculation icon here in terms of the triangle icon that you can see, which says that we performed a table calculation on the second sales bill. All right. Uh, so in that case, we can now see the percent to sales for all the years. What is the contribution? All right. So that was a quick table calculation where it allows us to apply based on our uh, requirement, the defined functions. We can simply click and view those calculations instantly in our view. All right. And now in a lot of cases, we might want to customize these calculations. So that's when then you can have your additional table calculations that you can manually perform. All right. Uh, there is a question put up raised by uh, Shubhani. Shubhani, in terms of moving now, uh, when we're talking of moving average or any kind of moving function, all right, here it says moving average, but this is one of the calculations. So it can be a moving average or any other calculation, wherein moving calculations will ideally show us a, a fluctuation or fluctuation that we can identify in terms of long trends. All right. So that is what moving calculations are. So we will see an example of this of what are moving calculations and uh, that's how you'll be able to understand the difference of uh, what these are. All right. <coughs> and again, like I said, to understand these in details, we can also make use of the aggregation functions, the calculator scheme where it can give us the entire detailing. Right. So this was a quick example. Let me add this as a quick table calculation. Now next, as I mentioned, these are inbuilt ones that we made use of, but there are times where we might want to customize these tables. All right. So in this case, let's have our order date back in columns. Let's have our sales in rows. Right. We've again created a view. Let's have 
Uh, now in this case, I'm not going to add in another pill. I'm going to uh, perform the calculation on the sales pill itself that we have here. All right. So you're on the sales pill. Now instead of quick table, I'm going to select on add table calculation because we want to provide a customized one. So if you've seen an example earlier when we wanted to build in a Pareto chart or other kind of charts where we made use of table calculations, right? It calculated our data in terms of calculations across at the table level. So let us understand uh, how these calculations come into picture, how they compute the values at the table level. All right. So these are the drop downs again provided in terms of the functions, the computations that we want to make use of and apply to the rows in our database to calculate our values. All right. So let's say I'm going to select running total this time. All right. And instead of the, uh, how do I want to summarize? So I want the running total and here again, whether I want it as a sum, as an average, a minimum or a, or a maximum. Let's say I'm going to pick up average. So what we're doing is we're going to be seeing our sales as an average running total here. All right. And in terms of running along, whether you want it across the table, a particular cell, all right, or a particular field in this case. So we can uh, specify now since we have order date and our view is giving us the option to select from the available view. So let's have it running uh, across and let's have it across the order date. All right. So that's how we can select each of these different uh, requirements and compute the value that we want to perform. All right. So that's how we can have these computings that are taking place. All right. So <coughs> when you talk of table across, then in this case, it computes the entire table. It will compute the entire table across here that we can see in terms of uh, the, the tables here which are present in our view. All right. When we talk about uh, calculating in terms of the cell, all right, then in that case, it's going to pick up uh, the individual cells present in our row. All right. So in this, we are addressing to the individual cells which are present now. Uh, had I changed this to a table view, then uh, that's when we would specifically talk about, let's say we were at a year level and we had uh, aggregated this as a quarter level. Uh, let me just change that option and show it to you all so that uh, you'll get a better idea. Let's have this at a quarter level, all right? And let's say, let me add in region as well. Now, in this case, we would be talking about individual. When we talk of table calculations happening at cell level, we're talking of an individual level, all right? So we're talking of for 2011 for the central region for quarter one, all right? So I wanted to address individual cells and perform the calculations, all right? So that is what would be the cell level. Or then I can select an individual field. So that's when we were selecting the order date. And in that case, we could select a particular field and mention that it needs to compute at that particular field that I'm specifying. All right. So I'm just going to undo and go back to our previous view where we were performing our table calculation and we selected the running total. We had our summation summarizing at average and we selected a particular field. All right. And let's click on OK. Let me enable the data labels. So here now we can see a calculation where it's performing a running average of sales here for us now. All right. Now in the same case, let's say we want to also have a secondary. Now that was our basic calculation. Now let's say I want to perform another calculation. I want to apply it to this particular table. So then we can also apply a secondary calculation in that case, wherein we can combine two calculations and uh, we can perform one on one of these calculations. So let me on the drop down, you have the option of edit table calculation of your So let's click on edit. And this is where you can see the checkbox that says perform a secondary calculation on the result. So what Tableau will do is it is first calculate this particular uh, primary calculation that you have. All right. The basic calculation, basic table calculation that you're providing. Once it computes this particular calculation, it will then perform a secondary calculation, a second calculation on this particular result. All right. <coughs> so that's how it's going to then compute and combine two calculations in this case. So in the second example, let's say, let me specify, um, let's have the difference from, let's keep it to basic. So the first we want it as 
the running total. Once it's given us the average running total, I then wanted to perform a secondary calculation on the running average of sales, where I want to know the difference from in terms of what is the calculation that I want it to provide. All right. So let's again keep it at the level of um, let's select order date again. All right. So again, I wanted to perform at a particular field. And what is the level that I want to specify? So here in this case, since we are mentioning the order date, do I want it at the deepest level, all right, the granular level, or do I want to specify it at a particular yearly, quarterly, monthly, or daily level, or the entire aggregate of the order date? So let's say I'm going to specify at a yearly level that I wanted to select, all right? And let's click on OK. So it's now performed a secondary calculation based on the previous one. And that's how we can make use. This is useful when we want to perform our calculations to our data in the table. And instead of a single calculation, there might be times there are instances where we might want to combine two calculations. So that's how you can make use of the basic and the uh, calculations in terms of having a secondary one as well. So let's say uh, you want to calculate the year to date growth. All right, and once you have the year to date growth, then based on that, you might want to then compute that once I have that calculation, I should get the percent difference for each total in the previous year. So then that's how you can apply and make use of your secondary calculations. All right, now you can also customize these calculations. All right, so we have the option, as I mentioned, you can go to the edit selection and that's where you can edit your tables and have the editing provided. And we have a scenario here now, a company and they want to increase their market share, right? And uh, in this case, they want to uh, ensure that they're uh, having higher profit margins, all right? So, what uh, the, uh, what Jennifer needs to do is she needs to ensure her company's sustainability and then she needs to identify the opportunity for business and how she can make the most of it, right? So for this, she needs to determine the sales variance for year-over-year -year growth based on a quarterly breakdown. So let us achieve this particular scenario. Now to achieve these as Jennifer, what is Jennifer going to require to do, all right? So let's first quickly on our notepad, add in our requirements. So for us to achieve this particular scenario for Jennifer here, what we're going to be doing is firstly, we will create, now since we are going to talk about uh, year over year, we're talking about time-based analysis, we will create a line chart, right? So we will have a line chart in terms of our sales based on orders at our yearly level. Next then, to further proceed with the scenario, now we need it at a quarterly breakdown. So we're going to drill and we're going to drill at a quarterly level. Finally then, we're going to create a table calculation because we want to know the sales variance for year over year growth. All right, so hence we will create a table calculation and this is going to be in case of difference because we want to know the, the difference, <coughs> the variance for year over year growth for our sales. All right, so let's achieve this particular scenario going to the environment and let's begin with our analysis here. All right. Let me have my order date as mentioned at a yearly level. Let's have our sales. All right. And that is or we that creates our line chart. We are done. Next, we need to drill at a quarterly level. All right. So let's drill our data and have a quarterly level. All right. And finally, then let us now have now we need to perform, we can see the sales and now we need to know the variance, the difference, all right? We want to know, uh, we want to create a table calculation with difference. So I'm going to add in another instance of sales here to our rows on which we perform our calculations, all right? And, and now I'm going to make use of the quick table calculation because we want to know the variance, the difference for year over year, 
right? So in this case, uh, I've dragged my second pin and let's have it at our, uh, the difference level here. All right, so we can see the difference. Now that is one way, but if you notice, it's still a little difficult in case of judging the entire view here. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, to make our view better, let's have our sales pin, all right, from the growth shell. Let's add it up to the color shell. So what it's going to do is on the existing sales view, it's going to identify and distinguish between the colors for the difference that we have. And that's how we'll be able to identify the difference. So let me just drag and drop it and we can now see our view where we can identify our sales and the difference which is based on its color. The red, the darker the size, the difference of sales is our analysis here says that it's in minus, all right? And in terms of a greener, the difference is on a higher side with green, all right? So that's how uh, when you hover as well, at a quarterly level, you can see that for 2007, we have a particular sales and its difference that we can see, right? In terms of the previous table. So that's how you can make use of your calculations and achieve our scenario. So let's name this as sales analysis, right? Right, so that's how we are able to achieve and have the sales variance of year over year that we can notice the growth and based on that we saw the quarterly breakdown as well where she can now identify the growth opportunities for business right so that's how we can make use of table calculations we're going to move ahead with understanding what are box plots all right so in terms of box plots, now these are used when we want to compare a set of data, all right? And uh, when we want to ideally analyze a distribution of data, which is highlighted up to five key values, all right, within our data. So that's a box plot. What it usually, it's also known as a box and whisker plot, all right? And it helps us in seeing the distribution of the values along the axis. All right, so the boxes here that you can see, these indicate the <coughs> middle 50% of our data. All right, and uh, then we can also configure, you can see these discurs or lines as you can see, these, these, con these lines, and uh, these display all the points within a 1.5% of the range. So let me show that to you all each of these in uh, the slides here. So there are five key values that is represented in the box plot. The first, it shows us the minimum value, all right? Second, it shows us the 25% quartile, all right? Then it shows us the median, the 75% quartile, <coughs> and the maximum value, all right? So that's how it highlights up to five key values within the data, all right? So we have the shaded box, all right, in the example that uh, denotes these five values. Let me go back on the previous slide here. So the boxes here is what is representing. Over here you can see these are representing the 50% of our data, all right. So these shaded boxes, the, the light and dark gray here, these are called quartiles, all right. So namely we have the upper quartile and lower quartile. So the lower quartile, this starts at 25% of the data set. And the upper quartile, it starts at 75% of our data set. All right. So these two boxes, these contain the middle 50% of our data. All right. And the lines here, these are called your whiskers. This can be configured to stretch to your uh, maximum extent of data or within a 1.5 times of the interquartile range, that is. All the points within a 1.5% is what you can make use of, all right? So this is where uh, we understood. So we have the minimum values, all right? We have the 25%, that is 25% of the data set, the median, the 75% quartile of our data set, and then the maximum value. So let's see how we can create a box plot. I'm switching to the Tableau environment here adding in a new sheet and so let me have my segments added in to the columns all 
Let me have my profits added up to the rows. And let me have my order date into the details section, right? Let me ensure that this is a discrete date value. Now let me right click on the axis here and say let me add a reference line. And this is where when I right click on my axis, I have the options. Now we will be discussing all these uh, lines in terms of the topic statistics when we try and understand reference lines, bands and distribution. But to create a box plot, we can click right click on the axis and uh, go on to the reference line and choose the box plot option. Now this is where you can specify the whisker extending to your within the data within the 1.5% or the maximum extent of the data, right? The minimum and maximum that we were talking about. The style of how you want it to look like. The fill colored, let's uh, pick up a red color, all right? The borders and how you want your whiskers, the thickness, the lines that you want it to be and click on OK. So with that, it's created a whisker box plot here for us. It's providing us with the whiskers and the lines in terms of the segments here. All right. Uh, let's say you can also do this in terms of having your particular analysis uh, creating these box plots by adding some more additional data and detailing as well. All right. Let me show you uh, one more example of a box plot. All right. This is a very simple one. So it's uh, pretty much where we're only trying to analyze based on the uh, segments here in the profits where it's created a box plot and giving us uh, each of the segments and the profits for its uh, particular year. Now let me show you one more example of a box plot to understand the five values that it picks up. All right. So let's have our segment added up to the columns. And let's have, let's use discounts this time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a box plot view that's going to show us the discounts based on our segments and regions, all right? So let's add in the discount onto the rows, all right? Uh, let me have my region as well. So let's have region and let me have this added up to the columns right here next to the segment. So it's created a nested level again based on every segment for its own region. What is the discount here? All right. So we have two levels of hierarchies of our dimension right from our left to right within every region that you can see here listed. Now let me go to the show me option and let's change this. Now another way of changing that was we can also go to the show me option and click on the box and whisker plot uh, view here, all right? So one way was I right clicked and I selected the reference lines and I selected the box plot option. Or another way of doing it is click on the show me option and click on the whisker and box plot uh, or chart that you have here, all right? So here now this has given us the entire view displaying a box plot where we can see uh, all the marks here in each box that has been plotted up. So it's assigned the regions here uh, as you can see in terms we can see the regions and uh, in the columns from the mark shelf, right? Remember that there was regions which was placed in the columns. As soon as we selected on box plot, it automatically assigned region on the columns shelf here in the marks card. It reassigned it. Let me just undo this option. So this is how we had a nested bar graph created. When I go to the show me option and click on box plot, notice that region from the columns will get added up to the mark section here. All right. There you go, you can see that it's got added up here. So basically when we change it from a bar or from any chart type to a box plot, then Tableau is determining uh, the individual marks in the plot that it should represent. So it's determining that the marks here that we have should be represented based on region. All right, so well, uh, you can change that as well. So let's have our region dragged back onto our columns. All right, so we want it at a regional level here and uh, based on uh, for every segments in every region. Now we can see a horizontal line that is created a flattened box plot here in this case. 
all right which is uh, the reason being that it's right now giving us a value based on a single mark all right now box plot as the description as the definition says it is intended to show us the distribution of our data right now what's happening here is it is aggregating the entire data in the current view and we can see a flattened view of flattened look of our data here so we want to disaggregate our measures in that matter we do want we want to uh, uh, we want to have our aggregation uh, level changed and disaggregate our data where it can give us an entire distribution of our data so here in the analysis menu click on the analysis menu you can see aggregated measures that's been enabled i'm going to uncheck this option and by this i'm going to turn off the aggregation all right so i'm going to disaggregate the measures here so that we can now see that the data which has uh, is at a disaggregated level wherein we can now understand each of these uh, marks instead of a single mark we are able to view each of the marks for every column in a range of the data source that we have all right now to uh, see and view and understand some additional information you have to make this more readable make this more appealing what i'm going to do is i'm going to swap our axis here and i'm going to make this into a horizontal view all right so that it's going to be easier see we are, it's going to be easier for us to compare every segment the region for every segment uh what are <laughs> the discounts that have been offered all right now let me let's add some additional analysis to this as well so at the bottom axis we have the discount here i'm going to simply go on to the edit axis that we have we have the option to edit the reference lines you can see the reference lines and automatically there's a box plot that has been selected so we can edit these reference lines and change the entire uh, banding and the colors as uh, you remember so let's select something more interesting from a light gray let's select a red one uh, you can also select on the transparency level so let's add up the transparency level to let's say 80 all right uh, let's stick to the borders as it is and the whiskers as uh, 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 the default and click on okay all right now with that we can see that the discount is pretty much the same all right the discount is pretty much the same with uh, uh, for all the segments here if you notice in terms of whenever we are seeing all the west all right the discounts are pretty much the same for all the segments right also if you are an aspiring data analyst looking for online training and certifications from prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts and search no more simply learn's postgraduate program in data analysis from purdue university in collaboration with ibm should be your right choice for more details use the link in the description box below and with that in mind over to our training experts so that is one analysis that we can see also we can see that the interquartile range that is the 25% to the 75% of the discount we have the central region and that is showing us the highest range all right so uh, this is how we are able to identify and uh, see the highest ranges here so each of it is representing the entire detailing that uh, you can see here so the boxes here all right these boxes are representing the 50% of our data then again these are divided as the 2.25% quartile and 75% quartile and then we have the risk of values which are configured based on the maximum and minimum the reference lines that we have the maximum uh, the maximum and the minimum uh, values in terms of the interquartile range all right so that is your box plot so the box here the one in the center these are indicating the 50% of the data and again you can see two quartiles two distributions of the data all right and then the whiskers which is showing us the quartiles in terms of the minimum maximum of 1.5 so let me take you back to the presentation slide so we have the ma maximum value we have the 75% quartile that we saw the median the 25% and the minimum value so that was an example of box plot now formatting as we already know as we are aware is a very important part of both our analysis as well as our presentation all right everything that you see that you view in your sheet you want to ensure that there is a proper formatting applied that our shading fonts lines and borders all of this makes a lot of difference when it comes to how you want to present and view your data 
all right so it is pretty important and hence in this particular chapter we are going to be discussing on different formatting options that are available how we can format our visualizations how we can make use of the colors the uh, worksheet themes in terms of resizing in terms of working with labels the mark types all right and we are also going to discuss on annotations and how we can make use of annotations and annotate a particular value all right so let us explore what i'm going to do is in this particular topic as i have already mentioned we will describe and understand what is spatial analysis someone had also raised a concern on day 1 as to what spatial analysis was so i'm going to discuss that topic right away and that's going to resolve and solve out on your question then we are also going to understand how we can make use of titles captions and tool tips and how we can format axes as well as how we can format our views and results as well as use mark labels and annotations all right so let me directly move on uh, before i <clears throat> proceed here uh, let me now move to the tableau environment here and click on a new sheet now talking about spatial analysis spatial analysis is what is related to your geographic data all right so tableau works now how it works with fields in a special manner Tableau also works with the geographic fields in a special manner. It gives spatial data some special importance. It automatically assigns geographic roles to any data that you have in your data source. So, if you notice, I had discussed this yesterday. Right in your data source, it can identify if there is any kind of uh, data related to geography. It automatically assigns it with a geographic role. All right, so that is the speciality of Tableau. In case it is not able to identify in terms of the uh, analysis whether it is a geographic role or not, then you also still have the option wherein you can click on the data source and describe the kind of geographic role that you want to assign. All right, you can customize the role as well whether this particular country and option is a uh, area code, is a city, is a county, is a state province. All right, so you have the options, or you can keep it to default and the data type as well. So you can customize on the spatial data. And something very interesting about Tableau, for that matter, with uh, related to spatial data, geographic data, is let me take you onto the sheet. And uh, regarding mappings, all right, we're going to have a detailed discussion on uh, maps and how we can create maps. But uh, let me, since we're talking about spatial analysis, and since I mentioned it automatically identifies geographic data, let me show you how it treats the geographic data. So here you can see we have the country, all right, and we can see it has already identified it as a geographic data provided a globe sign. When I double click on country, all right, what Tableau does is it automatically, as you saw, adds in the longitude and the latitude for the country. It automatically generates the latitude and longitude. All right, and that's how you can see the map. Now, these are different layers and WMS maps that you can make use of. So, uh, we are going to discuss this pretty much in detail when we come on to the maps chapter. But as you saw, the moment I double clicked on country, it automatically added in the land longitude and the latitude into the columns and rows. So that's how Tableau treats uh, spatial data. That's how it works with geographic data. All right. So coming on to discussing with the uh, formatting, I'm going to take a new sheet here. Now formatting, as I mentioned, there are various ways, various kinds of formatting that you can perform. All right. So uh, let's let's talk on the most uh, common ones in terms of how you can open the formatting pane in the very first place. Uh, the formatting option that you have, all right? So for that, let me quickly create one view for you all. Let's have category and let's have sales, all right? And now you can see that you have the format menu, wherein when you click on the format menu, it gives you all the options, whether you want to format the fonts, you want to format the alignments, the shadings, the borders, the lines, you want to format a reference line if it's in your view, drop line, annotations, titles and captions, field labels. So these are all the options in terms of how you want to format. So this is the entire uh, window. These are the entire options that I'm going to be discussing about. So in terms of how to enable the format pane in the very first place is that the moment you click on uh, format here, all right, and you select a particular option, Let's say I'm going to say I want to format the fonts in the view, all right? Because of that, notice what happened. Did you all pay attention? The data pane here got replaced with the format pane. 
So that's how it opens up the format page. And then you can see all these same options in the drop down here that you could see in terms of fonts, alignments, shading, borders, and lines. You can format your fonts, your alignments, shadings, your borders, and lines. So in your view, you can select whether you want to format the font, whether you want to format the lines, you want to provide a shading, you want to provide a border, or you want to provide any line formatting. And again, in that, there are three tabs for every option that you will choose. All right. So this means Tableau allows you to either format your particular font or shading or bordering or coloring for the entire sheet, or you can also do it for a particular row or a column. All right. So it gives you that option, or you can select a particular field as well, whether you want to format a particular field. Now, in terms of the font here, you can see you can choose whether on the worksheet, what is the font you want, the pane, the header, the totals, how you want your totals to resemble, the grand totals. Now, these are visible and worked when you have text tables, <coughs> highlight tables, or right, grid kind of a view. Similarly, you can format your rows so that grays out the worksheet option and allows you options in terms of formatting your rows and the same option for columns. For your fonts, all right. So let's say I'm going to have my <coughs> worksheet wherein I'm going to have my header increased to the size of 16, <coughs> and let's have a greenish shade added to it. We need a little more darker color to it. There we go. So we formatted the headers and the values in our view, all right. So that's how you can format the fonts. Then comes in the alignment in terms of how you want, again, based on sheet, rows, and columns, all right, whether you want to align the pane as horizontal, all right, whether you want to align it as left, right, or central aligned, all right, in terms of the direction of your text. So in case, let's say you have a lot of data, you can change the direction of your text, uh, whether you want it vertical or whether you want to wrap up your text. All right, so those are to do with the alignments that you have, and uh, that's how you can align the row, the column, or the entire sheet. So in terms of horizontal, you can control whether the text aligns to the left, right, or the center. All right, in terms of the vertical option, you will control whether your text aligns on top, all right, in the middle or at the bottom. So top, middle, or bottom in terms of the text alignment. Then coming on to direction, how you want the direction of your text, whether you want it to run automatic, uh, so it will take in based on the kind of data is there in your view, or you want to keep it to normal, up or down. All right, that is top to bottom or bottom to down. And uh, then based on the wrap, whether you want to use, when you have long headers, then whether you want to have a, a text wrap, uh, that needs to be taken place or uh, take care of. So whether it's off or on, you can select on the options. And each of these uh, effects and options will take place on your sheet depending on the kind of view and <laughs> visualization, all right? So that was to do with your uh, alignments. Coming on to formatting the shading, this is to do with you can format using the shading command. You can control the background color of your pane and headers, all right? So again, you can decide whether you want to apply it on the entire sheet, the rows, or the columns. So you can, let's say, in the sheet, select that in terms of the background, I need it to be a little lightish in terms of a lightish pink. So it's put in the shading. So that's how, based on the worksheet, the total row banding, all right? Uh, so you can actually have a banding in terms of when you have a, a text kind of a table. Uh, you can then perform a row banding. So let's say let's choose a text table. You can see that uh, you can take off the shading, keep it to none, and then you can provide the kind of uh, banding size that you want. This is a size of two. You can change it using the slider. So now it's banding based on every three values. Let's add subcategories so that it makes your view a little more uh, easier to understand. So let us just use the hierarchy drill down. Go back to formatting. And now this is happening after every third value in terms of the band size, the levels as well. We can decide on the levels 
and in terms of the column banding as well, how do we want it? All right, so we can change the levels of the banding. Then you have the in terms of uh, formatting in terms of border. So you can format the borders in your view, wherein you can decide on uh, formatting the cell, the pane, the header, the totals. You want to divide the particular row or divide the particular column. All right, so you can make use of these as well in terms of division, wanting to have a clear or better view. All right, so you can see we've divided it. You want a thicker line. All right, in terms of column dividers as well. How do you want it, the <coughs> view that you want to select, all right? So that's how you can format your borders as well. And finally comes in the option in terms of your lines. How do you want your line format setting, all right? You can control the lines that appear in a graph. Now, in that case, you will have to change the view to a different kind of graph. And then that's where you can decide using every toolbar whether you want to see grid lines, right? You want to see the dotted lines. Is there a particular color that we want to add in, right? Or thickness needed, not needed. Trend lines. Now, when you enable, so when we come on to trend line topics, is where we'll discuss. But once you've added a trend line to your view as well, you can format how you want your trend line, the color that you want to choose. If you've added in a reference line, or draw price, you can make these options available in terms of formatting. In terms of the axis ruler as well, how do you want it to be? You want it <coughs> as none, or you want to provide a particular dotted line to it, all right? So that's how the view will keep changing depending on the kind of view that you have, all right? So that's how you can format the lines as well in your view. You can also format a particular Part, all right. Now, instead of just formatting, uh, we saw we could format the entire sheet or the row or column in terms of fonts, in terms of alignments, in terms of shadings, in terms of borders and lines. We can also format a particular field, as I mentioned. So you can format the fields in terms of uh, how you want your field to look like in terms of, let's say, you can click here and you have the option of format, which will directly open up the field as what you want to do in terms of the header or the pane. All right, we have the size, let's reduce it this time to 14. And uh, let us change the color of it. Let's have a bluish color. So we are seeing the headers now are changing in terms of the headers for our category. All right, so that's how we can choose the formatting options here, whether we want to do it for the pane, all right, the font, whether you want to change that and change the color. So that's how you can perform it on a particular field as well. All right. Now, in terms of formatting numbers, we had a question whether can we format and specify a particular option in terms of numbers as well. Uh, yes, you can. So you can directly have uh, this option where you can right click again and click on format, which will give you the options in how you want the fonts again for this particular field, which is sales. It's giving you that you're formatting it for sales. The scale, the number format, where you want to use it as automatic, a standard number, a custom number, a currency. So there was a question put up where uh, we were asked, uh, can we format the currency? So you have your answer, uh, your question's been answered right here in terms of formatting. All right. So uh, there we go. We can also format in terms of the numbering options as to how we want to format it based on uh, the options here for number format. I will let you all know each of these options. So automatic is uh, Tableau will automatically format the number based on the uh, format specified in the data source or the data contained in that particular field. All right. In terms of number standard, it will take in the format which is based on your locale that is selected, the kind of locale that you have selected, uh, the geographic location that you have. It will format it based on that standard setting. In terms of custom, here you can customize it as per your liking. So let's say instead of writing, let me use a notepad here to show you all. So let's say instead of writing 20,000, we want to show it as 20K. Uh, you can use the custom formatting and that's how instead of 20,000, you can use and write it as 20K. So you can use the custom uh, option in that uh, for that manner in terms of numbers. 
Coming on to currency again, it will take in the currency symbol based on the locale that you have selected, the geographic location. And in terms of custom, then you can provide a custom unit, you can provide a custom uh, uh, currency option in case uh, it, how do you want these separators, whether you want to have uh, commerce between every thousands or every hundreds, so that's how you can again select it at a customized level. Scientific is the numbers will be displayed in a scientific notion, that is the decimals, uh, where do you want to place your decimal values, all right? Percentage as the name provides is going to show you the numbers in a percentage format. And custom is where you want to provide and type in a format completely using a specified custom. All right. So that's where you can completely format and you can specify based on the number coding or the styling that you want. So moving further. So what is filter? So your filter helps you in narrowing down your data. It can be applied to a dimension, that is your contextual value, to measures, which is your numerical value, or to a date field as well, where you want to narrow it down to a specific value or a range of values, all right, in Tableau. So what are the ways that you can uh, possibly filter? Now, what are the different conditions that you can possibly filter is? One, you can select the data to filter in the view. So, right, you can add it up to the filter shelf directly and choose whether you want to include or exclude the option. The other way is you can have it added up to the filter shelf as well, or you can turn on the quick filters, which opens up a new card where you can quickly add in or alter your data in terms of filtering. So, let me uh, take you to the uh, window therein and let's start exploring these options of how we can use filters and how we can manipulate our data in terms of narrowing it down. All right, so. Let us start uh, beginning with the very first one. And I'm moving on to the interface here. All right. <laughs> now, first, I'm going to show you how we can filter on the dimensions. Okay. So, let me take in a new sheet. All right. And let's say I'm going to have the customer name filter. So, I'm going to use my customer name dimension and add it up to the filter shelf here. This opens up the filter window. All right, and in this particular window, uh, you have four tabs as you can see, one being the general, one being wildcard, one being condition and top. Now, let me first explain each of these tabs and then we'll proceed further in understanding how we can filter on the dimension here, all right? <coughs> so, in the general option, you can select the list that you want in terms of filtering and whether you want to include it or you want to exclude that particular selection, all right? So in clicking on exclude, we'll exclude whatever selections you've made. Unchecking this option by default means whatever we've selected, I need to only include those customer names onto my view, all right? The next is you can have a custom value list, or you can also have a use all feature where I'm saying I want to use all the options and I want to include these. So that is the first general option. The second option is in terms of having a wild card. So a wild card is where you can specify a particular match value, whether you want to that value contains that particular alphabet or starts with that alphabet, ends with that alphabet or exactly matches that alphabet. So let's say let's use the wild card option and say I want the names starting with all right the alphabet let me choose the alphabet S. All right, so I'm saying that all my customer names should start with the alphabet S. So when I click on this and then I use the customer names onto my view, I will only be viewing customers with the name starting with S. All right, so uh, condition is where you can apply a condition based on a particular field or by a formula. And top is where we can apply the field to be the top 10 customers based on a particular uh, dimension or a measure or by a particular formula. So we'll understand these tabs with different options of filtering. Let's use the wildcard. All right. Now, in terms of the wildcard options, so we mentioned it starts with uh, the letter S and I click on OK. All right. Now I'm going to add in the customer name onto the rows. So you can see that we only will have the names beginning with S, it's filtered down because we said that we need the name starting with S and we have all the customers or uh, names starting with an S here. Let's add sales to our columns and we have all the names of the customers beginning with S. That's how you can filter on a particular dimension, all right? 
all right uh, sikar uh, in terms of the uh, sikar has put up a question in terms of uh, can we explain the custom value list in terms of the custom value sikar what happens is let me just open up uh, the filter here so that i can explain that to you quickly when you talk of select list you can select from the particular option that you want all right and in terms of a custom value now let's say you want to randomly have uh, different names one beginning with a now this is a huge long list all right so in terms of a custom value i can simply enter the names or keep adding in the names that i already know so let's say if i take it and al is there an alan in our name or let's say we already know there's a sally in our name so do we have a sally i'm going to say add the name sally up add the name sanjeet up so i can use a custom list because i already know the list so instead of uh, avoiding the pain of scrolling through this huge list i know my values i'm going to simply add in enter the text and keep adding it so that's a custom value list i'm going to cancel the option because i want to right now uh, uh stick on to customer's name beginning with s all right so that was an example where we can filter on a field all right where i can filter on a dimension field in terms of case sensitive yes we have to check on that because in most cases tableau is usually very case sensitive when it comes to names so let's say we already know that uh, we have a tally in our list let us check if i have tally added in as so then in that case you can see it's giving me a drop down option to select from in terms of the case sensitivity and then all the possible names that are available for sally it's giving me the options to choose from so that was uh, filtering on a dimension now let me show you how you can filter on the measure all right so before that let me show you one more option in using the conditions tab okay so from the wildcard let me take a new sheet this time and uh, let's have a condition specified or uh, in terms of the filter so this time again let's have our customer names added into the filter in the condition now this is where you can specify whether you want it by field or how do you want to select it whether you want to use a particular uh, card whether you want to specify a particular condition now before i move in here to the conditions there is one important thing that i need to perform back here now here there is no y card that been used all right but let's say if it was the same filter on the previous one then you will need to go back to the y card option and clear and uncheck the option because it will not then be able to take in all these tabs and detailing so here i'm creating a new sheet hence no worry but if we do it in the previous sheet it says where we had the wild card then it's going to consider that it needs to be beginning with s as well as these conditions but only if you want the conditions to be applied then you need to clear the wild card all right so the wild card here and let's say i want to know the field and in terms of i want to know the customer names wherein my sales all right is or uh, let's keep the aggregation now these are the aggregations that you can choose from let's keep it default as sum and my sales should be greater than ten thousand all right let's click on okay now you can also provide a minimum and a maximum range value or you can then apply a particular formula so you can apply a condition click on okay and now when we add in the customer name now you can drag and drop it in the fields as well specified here and now we get to see only those customers which are having the sales as we specified which is about 10000 let's add sales and we'll be able to see let's enable our data labels all the sale values are about 10000 for these customers all right <laughs> you can add in a condition similarly we can also change these and apply so now i'm going to this time go to the conditions tab and i'm going to click on the none option because we're now going to have the top customers by field where we now want to filter our data based on our top customers all right so let's keep it to default you have the option of you want to see the top customers or the bottom customers how many by numbers 10 or a particular parameter those parameters is where we will be discussing when we proceed ahead and discuss the parameters topic
so yes, you will be able to filter on the dimensions and measures as well. So you can have the top 10 uh, customer names based on my sales here. All right, or let's say you can have it on the on the <laughs> basis of profit also. You can change it to profit this time. We're using a lot of sales. And let me click on OK. All right, so now what happened is notice in our view, we're able to see the customer names, the sales by each of these customers that have been generated. So the top 10 customers giving us the top 10 profits. So although profit is not in my view, these are my top 10 customers based on profit. All right, and what is the sales generated by each of these top 10 customers and who these top 10 customers are. All right, so that's another way that we could use in the top tab option in the filter when we are filtering on a particular dimension. All right, now there's another way that you can filter. So you can click on a particular option and keep only or exclude it. So that is one way of filtering right onto your data. The other one, as we saw, was filtering, adding it up to the filter shelf. All right, right in the drop down, it also shows quick filter. So when you click on the quick filter option here, it gives you a special mask card that opens up where you can quickly keep analyzing instead of going and editing the option. It gives you the general option where you can keep analyzing a particular customer name that you want to see. And these are limited by the top 10. All right. <coughs> so that's your quick filter option. You can <laughs> remove it. You can apply it to the sheet. You can even customize. You can uh, display how you want it to be viewed in terms of the filter option that is displayed, whether you want it as a multiple list or slider or drop down, a multiple value drop down, a custom list or a wildcard match. All right. And uh, based on that, then you can <coughs> also mention whether you want to include these values or exclude these values. And finally, you can hide the cards as well. All right. So that was your uh, quick filter. Now you can also, as I mentioned, filter on dimensions. So let me add in a new sheet here and show you how you can filter on your measures now. So uh, this time let's have our customer names on two rows. All right, let's have sales on two uh, the filter shells this time. So we're going to be filtering. Now this time, if you notice, the filter shell, because it's a measure, it opens up as to how you want to filter. What is the aggregation that you want to use, whether you want to use all the values, whether you want to use a particular aggregation or some additional uh, analysis in terms of deviation or variance. All right, I'm going to stick to the sum, the basic one and click on next. This opens up the option now whether you want to filter based on the range of values. All right, whether you want to filter based on the uh, least values. All right, so these are the different options. Let me explain each of these options as well to you all. So in the range of values, you can specify a particular range as minimum and maximum that you want to uh, explore. So you can use the uh, slider here as well and specify, let's say we want a value of approximately 5,000 and narrow down this particular data, all right, from 5,000. Now, uh, you can see at times when you just want to use an approximate value, then it's fair enough to use these sliders. Or another way of doing it in a simpler manner would be you can simply type in the details. All right. So you want it at 10,000 and 5,000. So you can also use the slider or use the particular uh, type in box where you can type in the range of values. Next, you have at least. Now, this includes all the values which are greater than or equal to the specified minimum value. So it needs to be greater than or equal to 5,000 is what we are specifying. So any value that we add in our sales value should be above 5,000, that is at least. And at most is obviously then the opposite that we are mentioning. It should include all the values that are less than or equal to this maximum value that we're specifying. So if you're saying it should not be above 5,000, we are only wanting to, to see the sales of 5,000 and below. So that's the minimum and maximum value of at least and at most. And in terms of special, this is to do with handling your filter, your null values in, in your view. So this is a filter that helps you narrow down on the null values, whether you want to include the null values, whether you want to have the non-null values or you want all the values added up in your view. All right. So based on that, you can have your selections and finally click on OK. All right. So uh, let me click on <coughs> the range here in this case. And you can select on a range, as I mentioned. You can click uh, 
and have the option of let's say 5000 on to 15000 and click on OK. So now you're going to be able to see your sales which is going to be in the range of 5000 on to 15000 only. All right. Similarly, you can also filter on dates. Now, when it comes to date as well, the filter window opens up in a different fashion. So we saw in dimensions, it opens up in terms of four tabs. In terms of the measure, it opens up the aggregation we want to use and then the values that we want to specify. Now, when it comes to filtering on dates, then in this case, what happens is that Tableau opens up a different kind of uh, window when you're wanting to filter on dates. So let's uh, have a look at that as well. So let me open up the filter dates option for you all. So let's have the order date added in onto my filter here. So this opens up the filter window wherein it is specifying uh, the date here. Uh, date field in Tableau is created in a special manner, a special dimension and it uh, often handles it in a different way. As you saw, even when it comes to hierarchies, it automatically creates a hierarchy for you in terms of dates. So even with filters, it handles it in a different manner. Here it specifies one whether you want to use the relative date filter or the range of dates. Now when you use the first option, which is the relevant, uh, relative date filters, then here you're going to be defining a range of dates that is going to get updated based on the date and time that you open the view. Right. So it's more like whatever view you select. Let's say you want to see the year-to-date sales uh, for the records of the last 30 days. All right. So in that case, you can actually specify selecting on the relative date, and uh, that's where you can mention the detailing of I want to see today's date and the last 30 days of whatever is today's date. So that's how to use in the relative dates. The next option that you have in terms of the range of dates is where you can provide the range of a particular date where you can give in uh, the kind of date that you want to choose. All right. So in terms of range of dates, you will be specifying a particular range. And once you've decided and selected between these two options, then you need to select on whether which kind of a filter that on the training that you have, whether you want to do it on a year, on the quarter or on the month. All right. So that's how you can specify that particular date. And uh, let us uh, let me click on the relative date option here and click on next. So when we open the relative dates, then in this case you can see again it's giving us special four tabs here. So the relative date in this case is we can specify, uh, let's say the sales in the last couple of days. So we can specify whether we want to see the sales yesterday and last how many number of days today with the next how many days or we want to see the days, the sales for tomorrow. Similarly, then you have range of dates where you can specify a particular range. All right, whether let's say you have the data here coming in from 1st of April uh, 2014 going up to 31st December. You can make use of the calendar and choose your specific date range. You can also use the slider here to specify. The starting date, again, it's more like the minimum and maximum. So starting is all the days starting from this date and above. And ending is that we want to have and see our data wherein the ending date should be 31st of December and sales achieved until this specific date. Nothing beyond that particular. In case even if it's present, any data present uh, about 2014, 31st December, we're still limiting it that it should be until 31st of December. And then the special tab, which again gives us the flexibility in terms of filtering, whether there are null dates, non-nail dates or you want all the dates to be included. All right. The option we have in terms of filtering on our dates. All right. So as you saw, we can filter right in the view where I mentioned you can have the exclude or include option. You can drag a particular field right into the filter shell. You can also turn on the quick filter and make use of it. So that is the filter shell. We saw depending on the type, we can filter on a dimension or we can filter on a measure or a date as well. For complex analytical projects, organizing and simplifying data is one of the crucial tasks. It is important to be able to simplify data for proper analysis. Organizing and simplifying data is a critical part of Tableau mission to facilitate you to see and understand data. Tableau can help you 
with all stages of an analytics project by using these advanced capabilities. In this lesson, we will discuss advanced capabilities to complete sophisticated analytics projects. After completing this lesson, you will be able to perform filtering and sorting on data, create combined fields to merge data from different dimensions, create groups and define aliases, create and work with sets and combined sets, drill to other levels of data in your hierarchies, add grand totals and subtotals in a view, change aggregation functions for a measure, split a measure value into bins. The first topic that you will study in this lesson is filtering data. Jenny, the sales manager of a chain of departmental stores, is planning to launch a new branding policy for a line of furniture that sells well. For this, she needs to analyze the subcategories under furniture with sales over $30,000 in the year 2013. To discuss the matter, she calls one of the sales executive, Alex. Hi, Alex. We are in the process of launching a new branding policy for a line of furniture with good sale. But to decide on the categories, I need to analyze which furniture sales crossed over $30,000 in 2013. Can you recommend a way to complete this task? Sure, Jenny. I think what you need is a bar chart where you can filter the results as per your analysis. That's right. How can we do this in the most efficient manner? We can use Tableau application that provides a number of features to create bar charts and filter large amounts of data as per your desired analysis. Great! You can start working on this task and present the analysis to me when you're done. So before we proceed further, let's discuss what is a filter. Yes, you guessed it. Filters let you filter data. A filter is a condition which can be applied to dimensions, measures, or date fields to narrow down the data displayed in a view. In Tableau, they can be either static or interactive. Being able to filter data is essential to any analysis. With Tableau, data can be filtered in different ways. You can apply filter using one of these methods. Select data to filter in the view. Drag fields to the filters shelf. Activate quick filters. When you select data to filter in the view, the filtered fields are added to the filters shelf and the unwanted fields are removed. When you drag fields to the filters shelf, a filter dialog box opens. When you activate quick filters, the filter dialog box opens as a new card where data can be quickly added and altered. So, how can the dimensions be filtered? Dimensions can be filtered either on the filters shelf or in the quick filter. When you drag the dimension to the filter shelf, a filter window will appear. These are the key tabs of the filter window. So how do these tabs function? Let me explain each tab one by one. The first tab is the general tab, which helps you select the list of elements you want to include in the filter. You can use one of the following options to define the element list. Select from list. This option allows you to select the elements you want to include from the list. Next is the custom value list. In this option, you can use the search box to directly locate the elements. And the last one is the use all option that allows you to include all the elements in the filter. Now you understand how general tab functions. Yes, I do. Great. Let's move to the next tab, the wildcard. In the wildcard tab, you can match the names of elements by selecting one of the following options. Contains starts with, ends with, exactly matches. Next, you have the condition tab. With the help of this tab, you can specify a filter condition. In this, only the elements that satisfy the condition will be included in the view. To define a condition, you can use the none, by field, and by formula options. These tabs allow you to perform a lot of functions. What about the last tab? In the top tab, you can specify a condition to include the top N or bottom N elements. To define a condition, you can use the None, By Field, By Formula options. Thanks, Alex. Tableau really has some amazing capabilities. Let me now explain how you can apply filter on measures. 
Before you begin with that, Alex, I have a quick question. Does Tableau allow me to filter on a measure wherein I can select to either filter row-level data or an aggregated value of data? Indeed it does. Tableau allows you to filter at row-level data in which measure value is calculated individually for every row in the dataset. No aggregation functions are used for row-level calculations. While in summary-level calculation, measure value is calculated using an aggregation function on the row-level data. Aggregation functions are used for summary-level calculations. In Tableau, the data is automatically aggregated by performing summation when a measure is placed on a shelf. When you apply filter on a measure, it allows you to filter row-level data, select all values. To filter summary-level data, select one of the available aggregation functions. Date filters are extremely common. Date fields are a special kind of dimension that Tableau often handles differently than standard categorical data. So far, we have learned how to perform filtering and sorting on data. Greg is planning to launch a new branding policy for a line of furniture that sells well. This demonstration will help you understand how Greg analyzes the subcategories by creating bar charts and applying appropriate filter to it. Open Tableau 9.0. From the home page, connect to the saved Sample Superstore dataset. Create a horizontal bar chart with subcategory dimension and sales measure. Drag the category dimension to the filter's shelf. Filter only for the furniture category. Drag the order date dimension to the filter's shelf. Select filter field as years to filter only for 2013. Drag the sales measure to the filter's shelf. Filter for subcategories with sum of sales greater than $30,000. Observe the change in bar chart after applying filters. Rename the sheet as Filtering Data. Save the workbook as Furniture Subcategories with Sales More Than $30,000 in 2013. Close the workbook. This completes the demonstration on filtering data. The quick filter can get started for existing filters as well as for non-filtered fields. The filter dialog box includes these filter modes. Single values, list, single value, dropdown, single values, slider, multiple values, list, multiple values, Drop down, multiple values, slider, wildcard match. The data can be selected from the given list as well as can be searched using the search icon present in the title area of the quick filter. With the quick filter option, you can quickly add and modify filters. You just need to follow three simple steps. Firstly, activate a quick filter on the region dimension. Notice a smaller representation of the filter dialog box opens as a new card. Quickly select what to include in the view. And you are done. Now, let us move to the second topic, sorting of data. Sorting data is an integral part of data analysis. Sorted data is easier to analyze. Sorting a data view refers to arranging dimension members in a specified order. You might want to put a list of names in alphabetical order 
compile a list from highest to lowest, or order rows by colors or icons. Sorting data helps you quickly visualize and understand your data better, organize and find the data that you want, and ultimately enables you to make more effective decisions. In Tableau, you can sort data in numerous ways. Sorting can be performed on axis, specific fields, and manually. Tableau supports computed sorting and manual sorting. Computed sorting uses programmatic rules to sort the view, such as sorting alphabetically or from lowest to highest. Manual sorting enables you to reorganize the order of dimension in the table and can only be implemented on distinct fields with a distinct measure. Now that you know that the data can be sorted in different ways, let's discuss each of these in detail. Sure, I would like to know more about it. To sort on axis, you can single click the sort icon on the measure axis to sort the bars in descending order or double click the sort icon on the measure axis to sort the bars in ascending order. The data can be automatically sorted using the sort button on the axis to give a better view of data. To sort on a specific field, use the sort menu option to sort by one or more fields in a specified order, then select the data source order option to sort data in the order of the data source. The sort dialog box includes these criteria. Sort order displays the output in ascending or descending order. Sort by sort either by data source order, alphabetic, or by fields. To perform a manual sort, use the sort menu option to sort manually. Then, rearrange the order of dimension members in a custom order based on your business specifications. Manual sort can be done in two ways. Use sort toolbar button on the selected item. Locate and drag headers in the view. Let us now move to the next topic, creating combined fields. Combined fields are used to create a cross product of members from different dimensions. Two or more dimensions can be combined to create a Cartesian product of dimension members. The view includes all combinations of each member of the dimensions. Let's look at an example. A combined field has been created using segment and region. When added to the view, it displays all combinations of segment and region elements. Creating groups and defining aliases are some more features that Tableau offers. Let's understand each of these concepts. Let's say you want to view data at levels that are not already present in the data source. In such situations, groups are used to combine dimension members to create a higher level member. When a group is created, a default name is automatically formed using the combined member's name. The new grouped field takes over the dimension on rows or columns. For example, a group can be created by combining the sales for envelopes, labels, and paper for analysis. Now, the question arises that, can alternate names be provided in this case? And the answer is yes, you can. Aliases will provide the flexibility for renaming dimension members to help make more sense in the current view. The good part is, Tableau does not change the original data on changing an alias in your view. You can change aliases at any time using the Edit Aliases dialog box. There are some things you need to keep in mind, such as aliases can only be defined for discrete dimensions and dates. These can be applied to dimensions only and not to measures. Moreover, the method for creating aliases depends on the type of data source you use. Following is an illustration of defining an alias for the east element of the region dimension. Let us now move to the next topic, working with sets and combined sets. Usually, you have large sets of data that you want to visualize. In such a condition, you might find that limiting the amount of information displayed to an important subset of records helps you work with and answer questions about the data more effectively. Sets are custom fields that define a subset of dimension members. A set can be created for specific dimension members in the view, or it can be based on a condition. Computed sets are dynamic as the number of members in the set can vary at runtime based on the condition. Furthermore, you can also drag a set to the filter shelf to quickly filter the view to display only the members of the sets. 
Likewise, you can also create a set by combining existing sets. All you need is to specify the logical operator between the two sets. New sets can be formed by combining the sets consisting of either all the members from the sets, only shared members, members existing in one of the sets. The dimensions of the sets should be the same in order to combine two sets. By now, you have a brief idea on how to create groups, define aliases, and create sets and combine sets. Greg is planning to launch an advertising scheme for certain product subcategories that are related to each other. This demonstration shows how Greg creates a visualization that displays the aggregated profit ratio and highlights the bottom five subcategories by sales. This demo will give you an overview on how to create a group to combine dimension members, create a computed set to include dimension members automatically, open Tableau 9.0, From the home page, connect to the saved sample superstore dataset. Create a horizontal bar chart with subcategory dimension and profit ratio measure. Select tables and chairs to create a group. Create a set on subcategory. Name the set as bottom five subcategories by sales. Click the top tab. Under Buy Field, select Bottom 5 Subcategories by Sales from the drop down. Drag the Bottom 5 Subcategories by Sales set to the color shelf. To the marks card. Rename the sheet as Groups and Sets. Save the workbook as Working with Groups and Sets. Close the workbook. This completes the demonstration on working with groups and sets. Now, let us study how can we drill to other levels in a hierarchy. Jenny is required to present the company's sales performance across different regions, states, and cities in an upcoming meeting. She calls Alex to help her make this report in a quick and efficient manner. Hi, Alex. I need you to create a report for me to present the company's sales performance across different regions, states, and cities. Sure, Jenny. Are there any specific points that you want me to keep in mind? Yes, I want to use the same data source for the detail and summary information. In other words, I want to create a report where all the data is contained within the same report. Can you suggest a way to do that? Sure, Jenny. For creating such reports, Tableau offers the feature of hierarchy, where you can drill down to several lower layers of detail. Great! Please start working on this report and share the final output with me. I was just wondering, can we drill to other levels in a hierarchy? Yes, we can. A hierarchy is a grouping of related dimensions depicting direct parent-child relationships between them. 
Built-in hierarchies are not present in relational databases, but it can be inherited from the relational databases that have similar dimensions. It is useful in the following ways. It facilitates analyzing a high-level overview of your data and then drilling down to lower levels of detail. What's amazing in that Tableau separates the data fields automatically into hierarchies, so you can easily break down the view by year, quarter, month, etc. Moreover, it also enables you to create your own custom hierarchies. If you want to view your data at a lower or higher level in the hierarchy, then drilling is what you're looking for. For instance, you can drill up from date through year, or you can drill down from year to date. That way, drilling is one of the most suitable ways to navigate hierarchies. Various methods of drilling are available in Tableau. It allows you to drill using fields on shelves or drill using headers. Let me show you how. Drilling using headers can be referred to as uneven drill as only desired members are displayed rather than all the members from the list. You can click a header value in the view and select Drill Down or Drill Up from the menu. Let's say it is drilled down from year level to quarter level. You can expand or collapse a dimension in the rows or columns shelf to drill down or up, respectively. The plus and minus signs on the fields that are placed on the shelves shows the drill status. So that means the plus sign indicates that it can be drilled down further, while the minus sign indicates that you can drill up but cannot drill down further. Greg is required to present the company's sales performance across different regions, states, and cities. He is required to create a report such that all the data is contained within the same report. Let's see how he does that. Open Tableau 9.0. From the home page, connect to the saved sample superstore dataset. Create a hierarchy by dragging state onto region. Name the hierarchy as geography. In the geography hierarchy, drag city below state. Create a report with region and sales. Right-click West, select Keep Only. Drill down from region to state. Right-click California, select Keep Only. Drill down from state to city. Rename the sheet as Sales Analysis. Save the workbook as Company Sales Performance. Close the workbook. This completes the demonstration on Drill Down Report. Now, let us discuss another important feature of Tableau, Grant Totals and Subtotals. Totals facilitate the aggregation of data in a view. You can compute grand totals and subtotals for the data in a view. These totals can be applied only on grid type visualizations. Tableau does not compute subtotals and grand totals as just an aggregation. Instead, subtotals and grand totals are computed as a separate calculation of the measure at a coarser level of granularity. Totals facilitate the aggregation of data in a view. You can compute grand totals and subtotals for the data in a view. These totals can be applied only on grid type visualizations. Tableau does not compute subtotals and grand totals as just an aggregation. Instead, subtotals and grand totals are computed as a separate calculation of the measure at a coarser level of granularity. Tableau computes subtotals and grand totals as the original measure at a higher level of aggregation. Let us proceed with understanding how to define aggregations other than the predefined choices. Tableau allows you to define aggregations 
other than the predefined choices such as summation and variance. You can change the aggregation function by right-clicking a dimension in either the rows or columns shelf or by right-clicking a field in the data pane. Here, we have changed the aggregation function to average. Next, we are going to study about Tableau bins, which are useful to create a range of data. Bins are custom bandings of the values of a measure based on a specific size. You can bin data only for relational data sources. It does not support this feature for multidimensional data sources. Bins can be referred to as buckets of values and can be created for numeric dimensions. There are two types that you can create, fixed sized and variable sized. You can create a fixed sized bin by specifying the size of each bin in the Create Bins window. Keep in mind that by default, Tableau creates even sized bins based on a size you specify. As you can see, I have created fixed sized bins on the discount measure of size 10 each. To create a variable size bin, create a calculated field with an appropriate script. You will learn about calculated fields in detail in Lesson 8 Calculations. For now, just remember that you need to create a calculated field to create bins of variable size. Look, we have three bins on the discount measure of variable sizes. Now that you've gone through the need and importance of organizing and simplifying data, let us have a quick look at the key takeaways. Filters enable you to narrow down the data displayed in a view. Sorting refers to the arrangement of dimension members in a specified order. Combined fields are used to create a cross product of members from different dimensions. A group is a combination of dimension members that make up a higher level category. Aliases are alternate names for specific values within a dimension. Sets are custom fields that define a subset of data based on some conditions. Drilling helps you analyze the data in a view at a lower or higher level in the hierarchy. Bins are custom bandings of measure values. They can be created either as fixed sized or variable sized. Time for some hands-on practice. Let's now understand the below scenario and work on it together. You are an owner of a store and want to analyze the existing discount strategy offered by your store. You wish to view the number of customers who have been offered discounts between 0% and 10%, 10% and 20%, and so on. Create a histogram with discount bins and count of discounts and answer the following questions. How many customers were given discounts between 0% and 10%? What is the total sale recorded when customers were offered a discount between 20% and 30%? Now, wasn't that a great experience? You will be happy to know that we have two more similar scenarios for you to strengthen your understanding of organizing and simplifying data. Read the scenarios carefully and perform the task on the Tabo 9 tool downloaded onto your device. You can evaluate your steps by referring to the solution guide provided in the download center. So we have reached the end of this session on Tableau Basics full course. Should you need any assistance, PPT, project code, and other resources used in this session, please let us know in the comment section below and a team of experts will be more than happy to help you as soon as possible. Until next time, thank you, keep learning, and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts. Choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.